investigations and directing, evaluating, or managing spy programs. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Cheryl Atkinson, who said she left CBS because of the network's liberal bias, is seeking $35 million for alleged computer hacking by the Obama administration. The lawsuit names the Justice Department and Postal Service as defendants, along with unidentified U.S. government employees. Atkinson told Politico her computer was accessed when she was working on stories embarrassing to President Obama, including the Benghazi attack, the Fast and Furious weapons program, and Obamacare. She charged that computer forensics experts had discovered certain violations of her constitutional rights based on information implicating the federal government in illegal electronic monitoring and surveillance of her home and business computers and phones from 2011 to 2013. Atkinson also said the FBI investigated her allegations of computer hacking but never interviewed her. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After excitedly posting an image of a Lamborghini Rebenton to his Facebook account earlier this afternoon, 38-year-old little boy Nick Weber talked to Onion reporters about his passion for fast cars. When I saw that car, I was like, whoa, it was so cool. I had to show it to all my friends. I like red cars the best, but only ones that are really, really fast. I can't wait to get one when I'm older. I'm going to get the fastest car in the whole world. <laughs> Though Weber also frequently posts about his other interests, which include motorcycles, fighter jets, and Marvel superhero Iron Man, the nearly 40-year-old small child confirmed that sports cars are his favorite, and the picture of the bright yellow Lamborghini has already garnered 15 likes and 9 comments from other enthused middle-aged children who are friends with Weber on the social networking site. My best friend Bradley, he sent me a picture of a blue convertible that's so awesome, it has these big wheels, and even has a racing stripe on it. After watching several online videos of fast cars and eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch, the homeowning little tyke went to his room to take a nap. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Cantwell. Double dose of Chris Cantwell this week. You'll be on Wednesday night as you normally are, and this, of course, is Tuesday. You can, of course, you the listener, take control of the airwaves here, bring up anything on your mind. We'll talk about... Apparently, a decision that could be made by the Federal Communi uh, Communications Commission to essentially create a public utility out of the Internet. Oh, those fellows at the freaking MCC, FCC. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad, uh, the proposal here. And according to Grover Norquist over at Reuters, that'll mean you're going to be paying more for your Internet access if that happens. And they'll explain why here in a moment. Also, That's so weird. I thought the government would like give us free stuff. Wouldn't you think? Uh, I guess it didn't work that way. We'll explain the details here. Also, Kim Jong-un has extended an olive branch to South Korea. And I don't know if you you probably came across this story, Chris Cantwell. The, you remember the story about the former police chief, Mark Kessler, who uh, made some inflammatory videos that actually kind of are similar to some of yours. Yeah, he was doing some gun stuff, right? He was he yeah. was shooting things and saying, and "Hey, cursing. it's Nancy Pelosi. You're gonna shoot Nancy Pelosi because she's a zombie or something to that effect." You I know? don't remember the exact. There was more than one video, yeah. but but uh, yeah, it was sort of known for being profane. He would say, you know, "F this" and "F that," and then start firing off uh, machine gun rounds, and it was very angry. And the idea was like he was a former police chief who'd sort of gone bad uh, or yeah. whatever, or like gone to the freedom side or something like that. <laughs> you heard about what happened with him, right? I heard, was he a Fed or something like that? Sure there was enough. something came out, yeah. Yeah, he was working for the Feds. We'll give you more information about that too. Uh, Dave in New Hampshire's first. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Dave. Hey, I wanted to provide you guys an update regarding a New Hampshire gun rights case uh, that involves a free stater. Okay, sure. 
uh, some you guys probably know Max Abramson, who is now one of the uh, 20, I, I guess roughly 20, free staters state reps. That's correct. Max is uh, yeah, a Free State Project early mover, lives in the Seacoast region, and he's a felon. You know, I didn't know that. Uh, there was uh, one of the – there's a, a sort of a rhino or maybe a conservative in, uh, act, activist in Gosstown who's been trying to out him and raise concerns about that and so forth. I, I assume this must be in relation to the, the gun rights case that I'm talking about where he – he was uh, he was accused of firing a weapon to break up a fight, basically. Yeah, that's correct. We've actually had Max call Free Talk Live to tell the story. Uh, my recollection of it was that he had there was apparently some roommates of his who were having a party at his house. Uh, apparently, some of the people who were attending the party were part of some kind of biker gang, and the biker gang decided to start a fight inside the house with some other party goers. And in order to try to stop the fight from continuing, he fired, uh, you know, I guess he tried shouting and that didn't work. So he fired a handgun out the back door of his house into the ground, you know, purposefully shooting into the ground, um, not putting anybody in danger or anything like that for the purpose of making a loud noise and getting people's attention to tell them, get the hell out of the house. And apparently it worked for that purpose, but then one of the uh, somebody called the police on him, and they arrested him and charged him with a felony. And he was found guilty, I believe, by a jury of his so-called peers. And I guess you know, I don't think he was sentenced to any jail time. I think it was all probation, or maybe even not that much probation, because I think he, because he was off probation, means he could run for political office. He ran for state representative in 2014, and he won. Um, and then just recently, he was making headlines because word got out, I guess, even though it was known during the campaign that he was a felon. But now that he was appointed to the Criminal Justice Committee, which is where he wanted to be on in the state house, uh, that's the committee that he had chosen. He had been given that, but now there's headlines saying that that has been pulled from him. Well, this is part of why it's such a tragedy that, that this apparent rhino got the uh, speakership because the Republicans got a pretty big majority when they won in twenty, you know, twenty fourteen, the control of the House, and we thought that that Bill O'Brien was going to be Speaker again, and he's a, basically a conservative and he's also free stater friendly. Uh, but there was this surprise where this other guy got it, who's sort of considered to be more of a Republican in name only. And that, you know, he gets to make the decisions, you know, as to who goes into which committee. Mm -hmm. um, but it's like anything else, we, you know, I still have an optimistic look at this. I mean, look how far Max got, despite being convicted of a, a victimless crime, uh, a felony. He still got that far. And yeah. It's very unusual for anyone to get that. I and mean, he's actually, he has a bill that he's sponsoring, I guess. I don't know exactly what it's going to do, but he says it will reduce the, the two definitions of deadly force down to one. And he's basically, I mean, you know, he's taking the situation that he, he was in and, and uh, running with it and trying to change the loss so that this doesn't happen to somebody else. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to know about that. So, I mean, the, the, the allegation here, uh, I'm not familiar uh, with, with Max's story, but uh, as, as Ian's explaining it, I mean, he... There is a violent situation. People are being attacked, and he fires a gun into the dirt. That's correct. Yeah. And they're calling that a use of deadly force? I don't remember the exact charge, the exact criminal charge. I don't think it was use of deadly force. I think it was just some other kind of unlawful firing of a gun. Honestly, well, I don't but, remember but the charge. But, Dave, you're saying that he's trying to alter some statute. Are you familiar with the statute he's altering and what exactly is being removed from it? Because it sounds to me that that's what you're suggesting. Well, I just got a press release from him a few days ago, and I'll see if I'll see if I can quote it. He says, "I have a bill that would re reduce the two definitions of deadly force down to a sim one simpler one. In a real life and death emergency, emergency responders and private citizens might hesitate to act when others are in danger. The bill is partly motivated by the need by, by the needless killing of Officer Michael Briggs, which might have been prevented if the difference between deadly and non deadly force were clearer." Unquote. Yeah, and Michael really clear, Michael so. Griggs, I think he was. Uh, I think it uh, rings a bell. I mean, he he was convicted of basically shooting a guy who uh, like got his nightclub or something, right? Uh, he was shot by 
someone in the in Manchester. I don't really remember the exact circumstances. Oh, the, I've got this all wrong. Sort of a foot, like I think it was made of a sort of a foot chase situation. Yeah. Well, one thing's for sure, uh, whatever the bill says now isn't what it's going to say when it gets through the committee and all that. But I think that you're right, Dave, that pointing out that Max, who is a felon, I mean, t to us, we understand that his felony is no big deal, that he didn't put anybody in danger, that there was no actual victim uh, to this crime and he shouldn't have been convicted for it. We understand that. But in all of the mainstream media coverage that he's received recently, I saw at least that which I've seen. They don't explain the circumstances behind his felony. They just say, State Representative Max Abramson, who was convicted of a felony back in, you know, 2012 or whenever it was. It was and, convenient sins of omission. Yeah, and so well, they and don't— the person, the, person who, the person who's writing that article is probably also a felon. They just haven't been convicted because they haven't <laughs> been caught. It's at three felonies they commit per week, I guess the average— Per American day, I think. I think it's what it is, three, three felonies per day. I believe that's the title of the video or right. article about that. But, you know, my, my point being— Only that, if you're very lazy. But my point being that he was able to win the election given that, yeah, this is how the mainstream media treats people who've been convicted of a felony. You don't even get an explanation. You don't even get the chance to explain what happened. You're just, you're a felon, so you must be a bad guy. But he still won election to the state rep. Now, he didn't uh, end up staying in the seat on the criminal justice committee, which would have given him more influence over criminal justice legislation. It sounds like he might have known a thing or two about the criminal justice system. Right, yeah. Let's kick the one guy off of the committee who's actually seen the criminal justice system from the inside. Everybody yeah. else there is just a bureaucrat yeah. or a former cop. Probably a bunch of lawyers in there, I imagine. So, uh, so that, you know, it didn't work out ideally for him, but he's still a state rep and he still will be able to submit legislation and vote on stuff. So it's, you know, it's not like it's a total done deal for that. Uh, Dave, I imagine you'll be following that situation on your YouTube channel, Ridley Report. Not necessarily. I mean, it's not. It doesn't really lend itself to videos because there's not. Uh, that's one of the problems. Is you know, I wish he had gotten more video of this. I don't think I ever saw any video come out of any of these incidents. You know, he should have at least been running a camera when the police got to his house. Oh yeah, good point. Well, thank you, Dave, for your call tonight. I, I think all activists should take your advice and heed it to the idea of having a video camera or you know your smartphone with Bambuser or live stream or something to stream out video and audio live as the police are harassing you or your friends. It's It can be an invaluable resource, and Bambuser is free, so there's really no reason not to go download it right now. It's Free Talk Live. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a part powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. 
freedomsphoenix.com constantly providing the information the real news about government policies and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government the real condition of the economy innovations in technology breakthroughs in energy health and computer science learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media the corporate media nothing more than distributors of government propaganda but now there's an alternative freedomsphoenix.com constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways with liberty and property under constant attack freedomsphoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda and it encourages the participation of its readers go to freedomsphoenix.com that's freedoms with an s phoenix.com freedomsphoenix.com the revolution between the ears has already happened Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's (laughs) cam.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Take control of the airwaves toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, the undercover cop who was posing as a gun rights Advocate will uh, explain to you what happened with that. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. And Chris. And don't forget to join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com where you can enjoy the features that we share with you on the site, including uh, archives that go back for years, plus our YouTube channel goes back for several months, if not a whole year at this point. Uh, Just go to freetalklive.com. You can link over to all of that totally free. Something else that's free, a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. You go to coffee.freetalklive.com, and you can get signed up for their auto ship program. The first pound's free. You just pay the shipping cost. And then after that, you can customize how often you receive more coffee and how much coffee uh, in each shipment you receive. It's a great program, and you can, of course, cancel at any time. But as an added bonus, not only are you going to get some awesome coffee from BuzzBox, but a portion of the profits will be going to actually help change people's lives around the globe through microloans from Kiva.org and Free Talk Live. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com, 100% organic, top 1% great Arabica, shade grown, great coffee. Get your pound free, your first pound for free. Just pay the shipping cost at coffee.freetalklive.com. For every 10 listeners that signs up there, we can uh, issue out one new microloan, which is that's one per month, actually. So very exciting stuff and great coffee as well. Coffee.freetalklive.com. We go to Michael in Rhode Island. You're on Free Talk Live, Michael, with Ian and Chris. Michael in Rhode Island. Going once. Michael in Rhode Island. Uh, hello? Hey, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, boys? Um, yeah, just a, a quick question. Um, I, I listen most days of the week, um, and I haven't seen Mark lately. Uh, yeah, I guess you're asking where Mark is. He is on vacation right now. In fact, I think he just took off on a cruise to who knows where. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know because I don't keep his itinerary. But, yeah, he's on a cruise ship for sure, like sure. a week. Oh, right on. That's great. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to see. I know you you and him uh, have fallouts all the time. So, <laughs> Oh, no. If Mark gets kicked off the air, there'll be a real serious reason for it, and lots of people will be talking about it. But, uh, no, that's that wasn't what it was. <laughs> he just he just kind of storms out, curses Eddie in, and right. then comes back. Puts in all a of few our days. radio station's licenses in jeopardy. No, he, he, was, he, he managed to do that and not get kicked <laughs> off the air. And, you know, in most shows, that probably will end your career, what it was that, uh, that he did this summer. <laughs> So there you go. I would imagine. I, I was watching when it happened. So. Oh, wow. You saw it live. That's exciting. What else did I you did. want to share? Anything else, Michael? 
I mean, that was really my question. I, I guess I can interject about the police shutdown in New York. Um, you mean where you know, the cops I'm, I'm aren't in? You mean where the cops aren't enforcing uh, like victimless crime laws and that that kind of thing, or allegedly aren't? No, I mean uh, allegedly aren't. Right. Um, like, They're doing I a lot less of it, at least. Good, yeah. Sure. And I think that sounds good on paper, and it sounds like a great idea. And I'm I'm all for less laws or less enforcement of victimless laws. Um, however, I think it brings forth this like this notion that the government's on your team, you know, like, oh, they're, they're, they're willing to not enforce these laws. So see, they are accountable and they are transparent. And they, yeah. they are on the side of the people. You think people are right? really thinking that about the police, that, that people don't realize how, you know, clearly this is all about politics for the police, that they're not doing this out of principle. Well, yeah, I, or if it's about, it could be I about mean, fear as well. So. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Like, I don't hear I a whole lot of people. I don't. I don't hear a whole lot of people stepping up and saying, "Hey, the police are swell guys because they're doing the right thing." I mean, if anything, uh, most of what I hear is, you know, on on one side or the other, it's either they're playing politics and good, or they're uh, afraid and it's good, or they're saying, "Hey, go do your jobs." These are basically the three things that I'm hearing about it. Right. Um, just, you know, when, when uh, that was a loose example, I suppose, in, in cases where, um, you know, I can't come up with anything offhand. I really just called to ask about Mark. Thanks, Michael, for your trying. call tonight. Uh, appreciate it. So toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE from Alternative Media Syndicate. And actually, this popped up on my radar several weeks ago, but it was one of the many things we just never talked about. Um, but I did have it in my show prep previously. You might know him as the man who popularized the term libtard. Former Gilberton, Pennsylvania police chief Mark Kessler, known for his YouTube video or his videos on YouTube, said that he created those videos for government agencies' intelligence in order to attract the worst of the worst. This is his quote. Uh, he also claims that this led to the subsequent arrest of militia members with quote terrorist leanings. He revealed this to Sean Hannity's allegedly liberal counterpart, Alan Combs, that he was instructed to create those videos in order to attract those who he called extremists. The real extremism seemed to be coming from Kessler himself, who not only went far beyond anything normally heard in circles he was trying to infiltrate, but who also even seems to have coined a now popular internet term, libtards, to refer offensively to liberals and those with mental retardation as equally as politically informed. <laughs> Kessler says that he was first contacted by those he now claims are extremists after he pushed for Gilberton City Council to adopt a resolution that would get rid of a number of gun laws. After that, he explains, he met with FBI agents along with the Joint Terrorism Task Force state trooper passing on information. This continued for years, and eventually he decided to proactively incite people to criminal activity by making incendiary videos that he posted to YouTube in the summer of 2013. He says, quote, I wasn't portraying me. I was basically acting to attract these sickos, and it worked. <laughs> he says, I thought I was doing good for myself, my country, my fellow Americans by trapping these radicals and extremists and bringing them to the appropriate authorities. But in the meantime, I decimated my career. Was it worth it? If I saved one person's life, absolutely it was worth if it. If it saved one life, it was <laughs> worth it. Well, I'm glad the guy's no longer on the job. Uh, so I, I would say that it was, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that his career was destroyed. I don't know whether it was worth it or not. I don't know who he got popped. Uh, I can imagine that it would work. I mean, lunatics contact me all the time. <laughs> you know, I get these messages from people, and I'm just like, why? And I assume that they're feds, right? Because yeah, I'm like, sure. who, who in their right mind, like, if you were somebody who wanted to start, like, I don't know, blowing up buildings or shooting cops, like, who in their right mind would contact the guy who's, like, out there talking about it very publicly, right? Like, it doesn't sound like a very, like, sound strategic decision to come and send me an email, you know? Well, what are the, what's the context? I mean, obviously, you don't have the email in front of you at the moment, but... But can you recall, like, what are these people I, you saying get, to you? You get mostly vague messages, like, we've got to do something. How can I help? You know, and, like, I'm mm. like, 
you know, and and if and if I get uh, to the extent of how can I help, I'm like, oh, you know, you should just you send know, me money. move to New Hampshire, <laughs> send me some money, you know, go do something generic, you know, uh, and and uh, especially when something like uh, like my article violently overthrow the government. I mean, mm-hmm. people will reply directly to that and be like, I completely agree with what you're saying, and you know, just let me know what I can do to bring this about or something like that, and it's like. Yeah, they want you to give like specific instructions. Yeah, exactly. To these I, I th- I'm pretty sure that they're feds, and they're looking for me to be like, okay, well, just sell uh. me some C4, and then we'll <laughs> go and we'll take down the government of the United States or something, you know. And I'm like, look, I'm, I am not going to start planning things with you. Are you out of your minds? You know, I'm probably being monitored all over the place. The toll-free number tonight is 855-453. I think it's interesting, though, because this guy was making headlines a year ago with these videos where he's, you know, firing off round after round of you know, machine gun am- ammunition while cursing and insulting politicians, which, you know, a lot of I don't I don't find it objectionable what the guy did. It was funny. Uh, it was pretty amusing. But he used it to draw out the crazies and the people who would be willing to actually take violent action. It turns out he was a fed. Did you know by age 50... Half of all men have an enlarged prostate. This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, well, I guess, uh, improve yeah. bladder emptying, Oops. reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world, so I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 
101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free to bring up whatever you'd like here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us on Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm, and you can join us online, on the phone, wherever you want to join us. We've got all kinds of ways to get interactive with you here. Of course, best way is to get on the lines here at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about Mark Kessler. This is the guy who, you may recall, it was like a year ago, year and a half ago, that he was making headlines for some fairly offensive videos where I don't think he actually uh, where I don't think he actually advocated anyone kill politicians. Of course, I didn't watch all of the videos. But it wasn't. I mean, if I remember, I I don't I have I can't remember them all right now either. He it didn't seem to be, but it was vague. Uh, you know, it's not dissimilar to some of the things I've said. They're like, hey, we've got to fight these people or something to that effect. And I guess he got some contacts as a result. Yeah, and you've fired guns in videos. There was a memorable one where you're shooting holes in the American flag, yeah, uh, for instance. So it kind exactly. of had kind of had a similar feeling. I'll give you an excerpt here from this guy, uh, just a quick, maybe thirty some seconds from one of his videos, which is really all I had time to dub uh, and take all of the cursing out because this is one of the things that that he kind of made a splash for was because he was very vulgar and at the same time firing weapons and talking trash about liberals. <laughs> With the idea being to gin up people who are willing to uh, embrace the ideas of violence and thereby open federal investigations against them. Here's a quick excerpt for you. For all you people out there who, who cried and cried about, oh, I use profanity. <laughs> you. Here's what I got to say. If you didn't get enough the first time around, go f*** yourself and get some more. Kind of the theme of his videos is lots of machine gun fire, auto auto fire. Machine gun that. fire and profanity. You get that one? Huh? You bunch of f***ing <laughs> suckers. <laughs> <laughs> this is just machine guns and pol politics and profanity. I love this guy. The, the Blaze has more information about him uh, coming out now publicly as an undercover federal agent at this point. Uh, John, though, first in Minnesota, you can bring up whatever's on your mind. John, you're on Free Talk Live with the Inn and Chris. Yeah, hi, thanks hey. for taking my call. Yesterday you are talking about introverts. Yes. I didn't hear the whole show, so I don't know if this came up, but while you were going through your list, it dawned on me that Jesus was an introvert. Okay, why do you say that? Well, everything you say about, you know, he liked to go out to the desert alone and he lived in a cave and he never showed up until he was 30. He always kept to himself. And if you just go down the list, almost everything applies to him. I just thought it was interesting because I hear your callers sometime, you know, talking about Jesus and it dawned on me that, hey, you know, Jesus was an introvert. Well, I mean, he was, if, if, that must have been a, a really lousy career choice for an introvert. I mean, he's like the most famous guy in the world. Yeah, Einstein was an introvert. Well, I mean, if Jesus was like the son of God, I mean, you'd think that God would have made him an extrovert or whatever. He's like the son of God was lacking in confidence. Because, yeah, wasn't he supposed to go out and spread the holy word or something like that? I mean, that's kind of an extroverted well, activity. I, yeah, I just thought I'd throw it out there because I thought it was kind of ironic. I guess you just kind of have to go on what you believe. I mean, the stories you believe, which, you know, who knows how accurate they are. Unless you actually knew the guy, I don't think you could say one way or another. But uh, thanks, John, for your call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Former small-town Pennsylvania police chief who posted online videos of himself ranting obscenely about liberals and the Second Amendment while shooting, an autom shooting automatic weapons secretly fed information on people he considered to be militia members anti-government extremists, and so-called sovereign citizens. 
to the FBI. Do you think that like maybe some of the people that he got arrested were also government agents? Like, do you think that they were like <laughs> they were just like they were looking for lunatics on the internet and they were like, we get sure. one, and why then they not? went after him. And then why wouldn't that happen? I mean, why wouldn't it be the case that one hand wouldn't know what the other hand is doing? I mean, this is a government agency. Uh, these government agencies don't necessarily all communicate with one another, and even when they do, they're not particularly effective at communicating with one another. So it's totally plausible that, you know, he gave a list of uh, possible suspects to his federal handlers, and then they came back with him and said, "Oh yeah, by the way, these two, eh, they're working for us." Yeah, you know? I, I really want to, you know, look. I'm sorry to say this, but like, if you're somebody out there who's got some ideas about you know, overthrowing the government. And and the way that you start your plan is by going and contacting a police officer. <laughs> Former police chief. <laughs> You're like, hello, law enforcement agent. I saw your video on the internet, so I figured I'd inform you of my criminal activity. I'm sorry, you deserve whatever you get, pal. Mm. You are not going to be very helpful to the revolution if this is your, <laughs> like, strategic planning. Right. He's basically skimming off the dumbest of the possible... Like conspirators out there. Yeah, exactly. You, what, what, what you picked up, sir, what, what your <laughs> what your little FBI sting operation picked up were the people <laughs> the who, who like would have screwed up the revolution had they you know still been out there, right? So you should actually thank him. You should uh, send him a yeah, exactly. Flowers. We got these really bad operators who who would have screwed everything up. Like imagine those guys, like uh, I don't know, actually managed to get involved in something real. They would have totally jammed it up. They would have totally given up information to the enemy. They're <laughs> <laughs> ratting out all their Facebook friends as we speak, and their and and all their Facebook friends are already feds. <laughs> well, now I can understand the desire to see a, a former cop like turn to the side of freedom. I guess. Well, and we hear that all the time. Like as I'm out bashing police and military, what does everybody say to me? Is like we've got to get them on our side because they're the ones who are gonna. Blah. And I'm like, they're not gonna do anything. They're gonna they're gonna get you busted. They're gonna go on YouTube and 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 talk smack about Nancy Pelosi and fire guns and then sell you out to the feds. Yeah, I um, I can understand the desire, right? Like I've been friends with former cops before. Mm -hmm. Um, I've smoked cannabis with some of them, and that didn't bother me, right? But then again, I'm not plotting violence, nor would I plot violence, and it wouldn't matter to me whether it was a former cop or you, Chris Cantwell, or anybody else right. that was suggesting violence. I wouldn't go for it because I don't believe that that's the solution. I don't think that's going to to make things happen. But I can under there is a certain attraction to like, oh, this guy's finally seen the light, and now he's on the side of good. Uh, so I can understand why that would snooker some people, but. Really? It's a good reason to like want to know the guy or something yeah. like that. It's not a good reason to like send him messages send him on the plan. internet and be yeah. like, "Hey, we're gonna go and take over the federal <laughs> building, and you want to buy some fully automatic weapons? We've got C4." No, I don't think so, you morons. Federal spokesperson uh, J.J. Claver said the agency doesn't comment on people who claim to be informants. State police also declined comment. Uh, so the only person talking is this Mark Kessler guy. He, <laughs> he got all spoiled by the YouTube attention. <laughs> well, he wants people to talk about him again. He says he's going public because he wants to reclaim his reputation. Kessler retired from the police department last February in a settlement with borough officials who intended to fire him after the videos emerged. The ex-lawman had private Facebook communications that he shared via email with the state and the FBI. According to documents viewed by the AP, the agent's names were redacted by Kessler. In one message, an individual advocates shooting the president. In another, someone talks about targeting mosques. Kessler said any normal person who is contacted by these twisted individuals has a duty to report what they were planning. Kessler's attorney said his client reached out to law enforcement about his contacts with radical groups. Do you think he was trying to make a move to like get hired by the FBI? Well, no. So, so here's what actually sounds like actually happened, right? So the FBI isn't commenting on it. He's trying to reclaim his reputation. Mm -hmm. What he's actually saying is after people started contacting me, after I made these videos, after I got all this flack for it, then I started ratting on people because uh, I had a negative, this had a negative impact on my life is what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like- I he, think his claim is the videos were made for the purposes of luring these these folks. I mean, it sounds to me like, look, a guy's a, a 
professional liar. He was a law enforcement agent, right? So mm-hmm. so he's saying now, okay, I was uh, hired to do this. But then why is he saying that he went out after the fact and started sending the FBI emails? He's 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 uh, if I'm unless I'm understanding something incorrectly here. It says his first contact with individuals he termed extremists came nearly two years ago after he pushed the city council to nullify gun laws. So that's what triggered the initial contacts from people who wanted to inform him of their plans. And then he made the YouTube videos to further draw out even more of them. 855 450 free. You take control. It's Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end of year deals on over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. The Experts at Web.com want to build your business a successful website for free, just like we did for these current Web.com customers. We've used and and looked at other website designers, but there's nobody better than Web.com. Web.com can build your website in as little as seven days free. Plus, we'll promote it on all the major search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. If after 30 days you're happy, we'll continue to provide promotion, hosting, support, and maintenance, all for one low monthly fee. If not, cancel and pay nothing. If you're in business today and you don't have a web presence, you won't be taken seriously. Call right now and you'll also get a free .com or .net domain name for your new website powered by VeriSign, the world's leading domain name provider. Call 800-297-0154. That's 800-297-0154. No upfront charge for site build, after which ongoing fees apply. Rights to site are relinquished when canceled. Domain included during active service, after which fees apply. That's 800-297-0154. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. 
This is Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number here. That's 855-450-3733. You bunch of f***ing suckers. Talking about uh, former police chief Mark Kessler. That was him there as an excerpt from one of his videos. Oh, I thought it was an excerpt from a traffic stop. <laughs> Uh, where he definitely looks like a cop, right? Like he's wearing the Under Armour hat. Under Armour is like a favorite brand of cops. You know that, Chris Cantwell? I mean, I, I'm not surprised to find out that it's a favorite brand of cops. Yeah. I, I know guys in construction who it's a favorite of, too. I mean, right? apparently it's good clothing that stands up to some, some, uh, some friction. So he's coming out now and admitting that the whole time he was actually working for the feds. However, federal agents have said they did not ask him to post these videos. In fact, the claim is that they were upset with him for posting them. At least that's what uh, former police chief Kessler has now said in an interview with Alan Combs, where he's come out and admitted that he was, in point of fact, actually not saying what he believed but saying these things these incendiary things to try to get people to contact him and say things about you know possibly being willing to commit violence so he could then turn over that information to the fbi he had met with an fbi agent and state trooper and continued to pass on information um, and as time went on he received contacts from fewer people and so ultimately now here a year later he's trying to patch up his reputation and I guess, I don't know, probably get another job in law enforcement. Well, I, it sounds to me, so the, the, the agency is saying that he wasn't prompted to go out and make these videos. He went out and made them. That's what he's claiming. He's, he's, he's basically a guy who, and if you listen to the videos, it doesn't sound to me like he's anti-government, right? Like the guy's anti-liberal. The guy's anti-democrat. He's talking about Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, yada, yada, yada. So it sounds to me as though this guy made some videos. He was probably angry, right? I, I think that this guy really does hate Democrats and probably has some feelings about, uh, you know, uh, violently overthrowing the government for which he works, right? And, you know, maybe the guy hates his boss, too, right? He wouldn't be the first guy to want to shoot up the office. And uh, and so he made it, he made some videos, and then he used uh, these contacts as his excuse for doing it and is now trying to get a, uh, a job back in law enforcement so he can behave this way on the streets of America and threaten his fellow man. Yeah, it seems almost like it was a ploy to. I mean, he was in the hot. He was already in hot water with the city council, which is what kind of sparked his career in the limelight for the you know, his 15 minutes of fame or whatever. Yeah. Where the city council, you know, he was proposing that they remove gun regulations, and they batted it back in his face. And so, you know, he was already in hot water with them. He may have seen this as a way to try to curry favor with the state police to get out of whatever the hell town this was that he was in uh, or possibly get a job with uh, with the feds like you know hey if i bring you enough bad guys maybe you'll hire me or something like that that's kind of where i feel like this was coming from because it certainly was out of left field and as he pointed out his career didn't you know it what it didn't help his career he i think he expected that it would uh, but ultimately it didn't. I, I, I suspect, and I could be wrong, I, I don't think, I don't see how he thought it was going to help his career. Because as we said, it's not like he did this at the behest of anybody. Yeah. He just he just made some videos, and I, and I suspect that he never realized that he was going to become famous, right? He was probably ticked off. He had a bunch of guns, and he was like, oh, I'll go do this, and I'll get 200 hits on YouTube. And then he went viral. And he wasn't expecting all the attention that he was going to get, mm. and all of a sudden it put him in hot water with his job and everything else. And he's like, let me snitch, let me snitch, so I'll snitch on in, people. You think he he turned it into an opportunity like he wasn't even planning this in it initially that's what it sounds like to me mm. because the guy is obviously if he if he was not doing this at the behest of any agency and he lost his job for it and now he's coming out and he's like whoa well, some big secret operation yeah well he resigned after what you know after they came after him like you made overthrow the government video stupid you're a cop what's wrong with you <laughs> you can bring up anything jerry's in utah you're on free talk live hello jerry Jerry in Utah. I'm here. Hey, you're hey, on the um, air. So, two things. One, I'm kind of wondering what you guys think about the uh, Dish Network dropping Fox news. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, Dish, Dish Network, probably one of the most noteworthy satellite television providers out there. Uh, apparently, I don't know what the reasoning was. I haven't looked into this story at all, but they dropped Fox and they put on the Blaze instead, right? Glenn Beck's network. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I was I under know. the impression that they already had the blaze. I could be wrong. Okay. Yeah, maybe. they were. They were running both of them at one point. Oh, really? I know that. 
Well, okay. that's interesting that they kept the Blaze, though, right? They like, ditched Fox and kept Glenn Beck, and that was like the whole thing. Like Glenn Beck got dropped by Fox or whatever, and then he created his own media empire out of it, and uh, and now he's on dish, uh, you know, he's on dish, and, and Fox is not. I can't say that I'm t- intimately familiar with the story. I, I do recall hearing some fuss about it, and I know that you know a lot of uh, Republicans are obviously very upset because Fox News is probably all that they watch. Uh, I I was in that mode for quite some period of time. And so losing Fox News uh, would have been upsetting to me. You know, any time between 2001 and 2008, I'd have lost my mind. So, Jerry. Well, I'm with you. I mean, I, I think Fox was one of the most credible. I, I flip around, you know, I'll watch, I'll watch them all. But I do think that Fox was pretty fair. I mean, the night lineup, you know, Bill O'Reilly and Kelly and those guys, they got a little... You know, they were a little more conservative, obviously, but um, I thought they were pretty fair, you know. Fair was fair. and, and, I, don't fair and balanced. Anyway, I, don't, I don't think anybody believes that about Fox News, except for people who are on the ultra-right. I mean, ultimately, it's pretty clear I that Nobody Fox on the ultra-right. No, no for, hold well, on a second. Nobody on the ultra-right trusts Fox News, okay? Right? The far-right knows that Fox News is, is in it as bad as anybody else. I mean, you know, the neocons, they like Fox News, but the ultra-right— well, right, consider it to no, be no, the no. ultra-right. Well, ultra-right is think, like I the think, Constitution Party guys, like these, you, think? you know, okay. like, even, like born-again Christian people. <laughs> People who are like they they they're anti-war. Like the the, the extreme rightists are. You are, think those people know that Fox News is not fair and balanced? The people in the Constitution Party. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, they've got, there are things that they love about Fox News, don't get me wrong, but these people are, you know, uh, in my experience uh, talking to them, they're they're anti-war people. I mean, they're Ron Paul people. So how they could possibly uh, appreciate Fox News with all the warmongering is is beyond my comprehension. Not nobody, no, none of the extreme right guys that I've ever met uh, ever had any use for that. That's the Fox News is for big government Republicans. Mm. <laughs> well... I think it depends on how you look at it, for sure. They're they're definitely right of left and and left of far right. So, um, but I, I enjoy it. I like Fox News. I'm I'm looking for another network now. I'm, so you, you are know, a Dish subscriber, personal, and so. you are upset. Yeah. So what yeah, is the dispute sure. about? I mean, n- normally it's just some sort of contractual agreement that uh, the channel and the company can't come to an agreement on. Somebody wants to raise rates. I don't know who's raising whose rates in this particular case. But ac- according to uh, MediaBistro.com, uh, the satellite provider has filled the Fox hole in its lineup with Glenn Beck's The Blaze. Uh, Beck wrote on Facebook, quote, I have no idea, no idea how long The Blaze will be on in place of Fox News. But for those of you looking for a channel that shares your values and principles, I hope you'll give the Blaze a chance. That sounds to me like they weren't carrying the Blaze previously. No, uh, I, I guess. Uh, well, wait a second. So there's Dish Network and there's Direct TV. Maybe That's I think I think the Blaze was on Direct TV, and uh, and maybe he, they he, they weren't on Dish then. Well, Dish Network had the Blaze and Fox News. I'm pretty sure at the same time. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. okay. Well, maybe they just moved the Blaze over into Fox's channel space. Maybe they copied the Blaze or something. Maybe there's Perhaps. two of the Blazes up there. I don't know. Jerry, thanks for maybe. the call. I appreciate hearing from you. Hey, Toll-free thanks. numbers 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-373. I would imagine, I, I mean, look, if you're a Fox News viewer and you've got the Blaze, I don't think that you're going to be terribly disappointed switching over. Because, I mean, I don't know I don't know if you watch Glenn Beck at all. I mean, I used to, I used no, to listen I used to the show. I used to listen to him when he was in Tampa, though. Yeah, long I, time ago. I, I would listen to him on the Patriot Channel, and I thought he was a really, you know, entertaining guy. And they do have some really talented writers over there. And they, mm-hmm. they have a real, uh, you know, like, they have good investigative journalists and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's better news than Fox I agree. any day of the week. Actually, so. yeah, we frequently, I, would, well, I don't know how frequently, but often enough. I mean, tonight, with the story about Chief Kessler uh, that we were just talking about a moment ago, the former cop. He, that story was on The Blaze, yeah. and uh, there have been a number of times where we have utilized The Blaze on the air here on Free Talk Live, and I've always considered it to be fairly good reporting. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, th- there's no such thing as neutral when we're talking about the news. Sure. You know? And so you're, you're going to get— It may be a little get, more liberty-leaning than, than Fox. It's definitely—there's no question about it that it's more liberty-leaning. I mean, it's largely pro-war, so I couldn't call it libertarian or anything no. like that. It's definitely not anti-state, but, you know, it's definitely—it it definitely does not favor— 
government, right? It doesn't favor the expansion of the state in, in large part. So I, I think it's uh, if, if some Fox News viewers are watching The Blaze instead of Fox News, I think that's good for society, frankly. I think it's going to cut down on their, uh, their desires to increase budgets and expand government programs because Fox News does a lot of that, and The Blaze certainly does not. We'll come back with more. You can dial in toll-free here. Cancel your satellite TV subscription and... You get yourself a free to air system, install that, and then you can listen to LRN.fm around the clock. 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. You can go to sat.lrn.fm to learn more about the LRN satellite channel, which is free to air, meaning you don't have to pay for a subscription. Hour number two is on the way. You take control here on Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, January 6, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,203. Silver is $16.15, and Bitcoin is trading around $276.79. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Extreme weather, from droughts lasting for weeks, and torrential rainstorms robbing the country of vital crops for food, to snowstorms of 70 inches plus, stopping cities dead in their tracks. Supporting your family through these difficult times is what eFoods Direct does. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bean or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, a juror from the Ferguson Grand Jury that chose not to indict Officer Darren Wilson is suing the St. Louis County Prosecutor. Grand Juror Doe is being represented by the Missouri chapter of the ACLU. The lawsuit claims that laws designed to keep members of grand juries from speaking about the proceedings of the grand jury are actually violating Grand Juror Doe's First Amendment rights. The ACLU says three specific Missouri statutes that jurors were ordered to follow actually amount to a lifetime gag order. On Monday, New York Times journalist James Risen testified in a pretrial hearing in the controversial case against former CIA officer Jeffrey Sterling. Risen has refused to work with federal authorities who suspect that Sterling was Risen's source for a series of articles in the book. The hearing was held to see how much, if any, information Risen would be willing to reveal. Risen repeatedly refused to provide any new details to the judge and prosecuting attorney. On New Year's Day, a new organization known as the Solutions Institute was launched by Daniel Johnson, founder of People Against the NDAA, 
on the premise of providing professional support and advice for activists. Johnson has established a board of advisors made up of public speakers, journalists, police officers, radio show hosts, social media gurus, and successful activists from all ends of the political spectrum. Activists and organizations can contact SI for help organizing media campaigns, protests, rallies, speaking events, and direct action campaigns. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, go to libertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, January 6, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Jury nullification. That's the focus of today's Liberty Beat special report. Here's John Bush. In the final days of 2014, the Kansas Supreme Court issued a ruling upholding a juror's right to exercise jury nullification. Key among the findings of the case, State v. Smith Parker, is the court's decision that the jury instruction in the case contained a misstatement of the law with respect to reasonable doubt and when a jury should convict a defendant. The judge in the lower court instructed the jury that absent reasonable doubt, you will enter a verdict of guilty. Previously, the Kansas Supreme Court had ruled that must or will convict language was interchangeable with should or may convict language. The current court, however, overturned that previous ruling, stating a judge cannot compel a jury to convict even if it finds all elements proved beyond a reasonable doubt. According to Kirsten Tynan, executive director of the Fully Informed Jury Association, the ruling is important because it makes a clear distinction between two very different types of language. It reverses a previous ruling from a court that was seemingly oblivious, perhaps willfully so, to any substantial difference in meaning between the more intimidating must and will language as compared to should or may wordings in jury instructions. The use of less commanding language in jury instructions makes it more likely that jurors will recognize that whether the facts are proven beyond a reasonable doubt or not, they and they alone hold the power to convict or not convict. According to Tynan, while the case may not be a slam dunk for jury nullification, it's certainly a step in the right direction. Today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat is made possible by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. This is the Liberty Beat for Tuesday, January 6, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty. A civilian casualty is flattered to have been mistaken for a Hamas leader, and an asexually reproduced sea sponge is worried she's turning into herself. This news summary is best enjoyed in a state of leisurely repose. So sit back, relax, and let the waves of condensed news gently lap at your brain. This is the Onion Week in Review. Hoping to foster a lifelong connection to the airline, Delta announced the launch of its official alumni magazine, Flown, this week, a quarterly publication for people who have been passengers with the airline at some point in the past. A press release from Delta confirmed that the magazine will feature obituaries, wedding announcements, and profiles of prominent flyers that celebrate the shared experiences and interests of the airline's 900 million alumni. I think it's a nice thing for Delta to do. I mean, it's always interesting to just skim through an issue, see what the old boarding group's up to. It kind of makes me nostalgic for the few hours back when I was on that flight to Tampa. Simpler days. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want right here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, there's apparently going to be a decision by the Federal Communications Commission to decide on whether or not the Internet is supposedly going to be a public utility. And Grover Norquist over at Reuters is saying that means you're going to pay more if that transpires. We'll let him explain here in a little bit. Your calls and thoughts are welcome at 855-450-FREE. We just had a guy call in a moment ago asking us what we thought about the Dish Network, Fox Network thing, uh, where Fox has apparently pulled their channels from Dish Network, and there's some controversy about they that. Po- did they pull them or they got booted? 
They pulled them, okay. uh, at least according to the folks over at DISH. We'll uh, give you some more information there because it's actually kind of an interesting discussion about how business works in the world of media distribution. Uh, I don't think everybody really understands that. I, I certainly don't necessarily, and I work in the business. I just you know don't work in the TV side, so we'll continue with that. But Pete is on the line first in California. Ian and Chris in the studio tonight. Pete, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hey, I'd like to talk to you about morality tonight. Um, I think that it's, um, I'm a big uh, common law guy, you know, no victim, no crime. Uh, but I think that, you know, it's a crazy thing. The FCC thing you just brought up, yeah, they, w- they would try to make it a public utility. Uh, I wonder, you know, how much more are we going to tolerate as a public? And, you know, I, I find a direct <laughs> correlation in history between the rise and fall of empires, between the, you know, the, if they feared God, if they feared the Lord, uh, Yahshua, or Yahweh in the Old Testament, they, if they feared the Lord and they did what he said, then he would bless them. But, you know... Can just we just like stop country, taking phone calls? He is all over the place. Can we just stop taking phone calls? <laughs> no, we can't. It's part of I the just, show. Let's just change the name of the show. Let's just do something completely different. I thought but, it's Free Talk Live, right? I know. It that's is. the problem. <laughs> That's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking to my, my, my host here about, is that, you know, we have open phones, and then guys like you get to call in, and I'm just like, what, what, am, what do you want well, me to say to this? You, how many times am I going to do this with you? <laughs> how, how, how can you be free talk live? How can you have any freedom without the Spirit of the Lord? It says, where the Spirit of the Lord exactly. is. Exactly. This is the problem. This is what I'm saying. I, like, I've done this with this guy, like, what? It's, Several it's times. Not, it's not every Wednesday, but it's really close. Yeah, right? every other one at the very like, what least. What if I just came in, like, every week and just talked about the same article on my website? How quickly oh, would awful. I be Lord, kicked off this show? Every- and you just get to keep on calling in and calling in and calling in. <laughs> you need the Lord. You need, if you want freedom, you need. Jesus, a Yeshua, blah, 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 blah. No, and, you, and it's the gays, and it's the bad, and it's the bad. What is wrong with you? Don't you have anything better to do? What's wrong with you? Why don't you see the problem, and why do you humanistically want to fix spiritual problems? What's wrong what with you? What the hell does that mean? Why you, you humanistically, humanistically you have a, want to fix spiritual you have a problems? Problem? What does hold on? What yeah. does that mean, Pete? How does one humanistically do solve fix- a spiritual problem? Okay, well, why you know? What is the spiritual about, problem? Uh, he doesn't agree with us. The only reason he's calling this show is because we're the last ones who will we'll put, him, put on him, him on the air. On the air yeah. Nobody. <laughs> he can't call Blog Talk. I bet Blog Talk Radio has blocked every <laughs> phone number this idiot has, every track phone he's ever gone to Walmart and picked up for $10. He's <laughs> he's doing it all the time. He's a, What is wrong with you? You have a mental illness. You know that you can't see things for what they really are. Religion is a mental illness. Well, now, no, Chris, you I have don't a know. mental illness because you want freedom outside of the, the Lord. It's never been. It's absolutely been proven factual. It's the most historically accurate book. And, and you want to go? Oh out my there God! And, Are you serious? You play, what a ridiculous claim! And, Are you saying you the Bible to, is the most historically accurate book known to man? Absolutely. Yeah, it says so right there in the Bible. Well, let me ask you <laughs> Who something. Who proved that? So what, the Seven Hundred Club. What's your solution to all these problems? Oh, you're going to go ask, you're going to beg Caesar to fix them? My, my uh, solution thought, you know, to this problem would be to hang up on you, but I'm not in control <laughs> of the board. He's gone. Toll free numbers, 855 450. You know, I thought he was fun at first, right? Like the people in the AMP group were like, you should stop taking these guys' calls like him and James in Arizona, mm-hmm. right? And the, and the guys in the AMP group were like, oh, get rid of them, stop taking their calls. And I at first I was like, no, they're fun because I get to yell at them and treat them badly, right? <laughs> but it's like every. Every single it, huh? week, these same morons call in here. Get a life, you losers. I'm so sick of it. <laughs> You're not going to quit the show, are you? Chris? No, I'm not going to quit the show. But I, this is going to be this is going to be how I deal with them from now on. I'm not going to engage in religious discussions with that idiot anymore. I'm not going to do it. And 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 I listen to James in Arizona say that. Say how many times is he going to call up when a demo was on the show? And every how many times is he going to go? Why should I care if somebody blows your brains out? I'm like, I'm sure you wouldn't, because I wouldn't care if somebody blew yours out. I'm sick of you. Die. Right. How did you like when uh, James called in on Sunday night to talk about you? When yeah, on the show. I'm like, get a life, stupid. Why don't you go look up this guy's website and talk about something about him? I, I, I've got, <laughs> you know, 
Go comment on my blog, you loser. What's what it was? And it, 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 Dave Bourne have him on or something like that. Like I different don't know. like listeners have them on his podcast, their podcast. Who had? Just, who had I, I, somebody had? Well, I don't know if it was da- uh, James Bourne, uh, David Bourne. I think I don't know if I'm right about that. I thought he I had saw somebody. The guy in the, from California. He had that. Guy no, uh, James in Arizona. I'm talking about oh now. My God. I just going from loser to loser to loser in rapid succession. It might get a little hard to keep up with because well, we got a few of them that call you know, in here, and I'm sick of them. It's certainly true that any. Anyone can call into Free Talk Live about anything they want to. The thing is that, like, chronic caller types are the ones who are more likely to participate. I mean, we're on dozens of radio stations right now, live, and then later on, more will be on, will on, will be on uh, in delay broadcast. But yet, still, it's like the same crew of people who calls into the show. And just to give you a hint, if you're listening to the program, you're not supposed to talk about this if you're a talk radio host. You're not supposed to sort of give away the behind the scenes in talk radio, but usually when we're not talking to a caller, that means we have no callers on Free Talk Live. It's yeah, a, you shouldn't have let them know yeah, that. You're not supposed to you're not supposed to let people know that, but you know, that's one of the things we've been doing for years on Free Talk Live is sort of revealing the the secrets of uh, of talk radio. Uh, one of the, that's one of the rules is you know you're not supposed to reveal when you've got open phones, but almost freq- very frequently on weeknights. Now, Saturday nights it's very hard to get on on the show. We have a great level of participation on Saturday nights because we have more live radio stations in larger markets carrying the program. Uh, that's not the case with our weekday show. And so, if you've wanted to get on the radio, you will you can do it any night of the week at. 855-450 free. That's what we're here for. 855-450-3733. But don't don't and call Chris here. Won't yell at you. Yes, I necessarily. will. Yeah, I will. If you call in here, listen to me. Don't call here because you want to be on the radio, okay? I'm sick of this. That's not why you call a radio <laughs> show. You call a radio show because you have something to add to the program. Mm. Don't call up here and just repeat yourself. If you if you if you're the type to call into a radio show and say the same thing every time, just stop doing it. And by the way, if you do call in and you do have something good, even even if you have something good, there's like a few things you're not supposed to do. Like say, hey, how you doing? Like don't call up and ask me how I'm doing. The last 10 callers already did it, you stupid idiot. What's wrong with these people? Well, you know, uh, oh, I forget where I was going to go with that. Anyway, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And make sure you know what you're going to say. Because if you say, oh, I'm nervous and I don't know, you're not helping the program. Yeah, you're well, supposed take, to help us. Yeah, taking notes is important. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So like there's actually been one time, Chris where I actually have banned a caller from calling Free Talk Live specifically because he was calling about the exact same thing. And at least with uh, at least with the guy there in uh, in California, the hell was his name? I forgot already. Pete. Pete, that's right. Uh, at least with Pete, at least he kind of sounds different. You know, he'll start out with some semi-different thing each time. And same thing with James. He'll pick on some, you know, nitpicking nonsense that's different. Somewhat Every here time there. with James, it's the same thing. Minister, your girlfriend can't yeah. well <laughs> violence the police. And every time with Pete, it's the same exact thing. Duh, you need the Jesus and the gays. And, the body, duh. and I'm just like, go hang yourselves. Seriously, nobody needs you on this planet. You're not doing anything to help anyone's life. There's no way that you're doing anything productive if this is how bored and uninteresting you are. The toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. We'll come back with more here. The Dish Network Fox controversy, uh, what is actually happening there, and then more beyond that. You can, of course, take control of the airwaves here, but also the Internet. Will it be deemed a public utility by the FCC? And if so, what will that mean? 855-450. be terrible. Then anybody could get on it. (laughs) There's more on the way here. You can dial in and bring up whatever's on your mind. Seriously, you really can. We mean it. That's why we call it Free Talk Live. 855 450 free or Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. 
you may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Adler Miller here with Midas Resources. Today is January 5th, 2014 and gold opened at 1197.90. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1242.08, 621.04 for a half ounce, or 310.52 for a quarter ounce. That's 1242.08, 621.04, and 310.52. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. In order for this government to be legitimate, it had to have been legitimate in the first place. And that means that every person who was involved, who was on the North American continent at the time, had to have agreed to it. And if it was set up by force, if it was set up at the point of a bayonet, then it wouldn't be legitimate. It wouldn't be any more legitimate than me sticking a knife in your ribs and saying, give me your wallet. Oh, you gave me the wallet. It's legitimate. So uh, the very fact that this government was set up by force, it was set up by killing other people, Mm. means that it's not legitimate. That doesn't even go into the fact that everyone who set it up is long dead. It's been assumed to be this real thing, this valid thing because of the magic scroll. They wrote a magic (laughs) scroll. You know, they got out a piece of paper and wrote it down and voila, and now Mm. it's a real thing that has legitimacy, right? Free Talk Live seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're invited here. Dial in toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. But Chris Cantwell has had it. He's sick and tired of you call. Well, not all of you. Only a couple of you calling the show. But I can't stop you. Um, some people have asked, well, why don't you stop these people from calling the show? Well, then it really wouldn't be Free Talk Live anymore. But there has been one point where I've been so frustrated with one guy calling over and over about the exact same thing, like phrased the exact same way. It's one thing if there's a caller who sort of has some regular topics that they hit on, but at least they have the sense to somewhat vary their approach on their calls. Um, I understand, Chris, your critique of Pete in California is that he tends to call about the same things, but it's nowhere near as bad as when Dave in New York uh, was calling. And I don't even remember what the issue was. I've had some fun with Dave. Right. But Dave just kept on calling. And, And even when we asked Dave to vary his calls, to call about something different the next time, he still wouldn't do it. And so we had to put an indeterminate ban on his calls for a period of a few months. That ban was lifted, ultimately, and he's been a better caller. 
uh, ever since that time. <laughs> I was one day somebody posted something from his YouTube channel into the Amplifier Group. Oh, it's which you can get stuff. into for just five bucks a month, by the way. But that's um, true. So he uh, <laughs> and I started looking through all of his videos, and he's got, he's got like thousands. He's of them. got all of these videos of him just being frustrated that he's on hold with Free Talk Live. It's like some of these people are really obsessed with the program, and like, look, I'm really good. I'm really glad that we have people who are really into the program. But like, I just need to inform you that like, look, the, you're not a part of it, right? Like, you're not a part of the show. Like, we're we're really glad to you know have you on, and maybe you give us something to riff on for a little while. But oh my god, like like you think that you're entitled? Like you're like, <laughs> let me on the air, Ian. Let me on the air. Just, you just want to be heard <laughs> so bad. Like, go get a Twitter account, stupid. We're sick of you. Well, one of the the viewpoints that you'll see that's somewhat common among people who get upset about how their calls went to Free Talk Live is that they'll feel as though that because the show is called Free Talk Live, that that means that they can just call and talk forever and that they should just be able to call in and just rant and just go and ramble and ramble and, you know, for a half an hour and that we'll just, it's Free Talk Live, so you should just be allowed to talk. Yeah. But no, no, really, what the show is supposed to be is a conversation where ideas are exchanged, you know, discussion happens. It doesn't always have to be friendly, certainly, but it's supposed to be a conversation. We don't just want to let anybody call in and monopolize the airwaves because yeah, just, ratings, here's a phone number where right. you can have your own radio show on 160 <laughs> broadcast stations yeah. across the United States. No, stupid. That's not how it works. Yeah, because ratings matter. We'll be off the radio yeah. if we let you do that. Yeah, so we do have to keep in mind things that are... Um, uh, somewhat entertaining, and that's kind of the goal here. So, toll-free number is 855-453. That's why entertainment, uh, enter calls that are entertaining will last longer than boring calls. And Chris, uh, Pete's call was made more entertaining by your yelling. So All right, thank that's you for it. That. So I'm just going silent from whenever Pete calls in now. All right, uh, we'll continue here with your calls and thoughts. We do have Joe. He's in New Hampshire, and you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Joe. Hey. Yeah, I was going to talk about uh, network neutrality and all that, but uh, that's just too depressing. So I wanted to talk about um, something optimistic and something that we can kind of all um, look forward to in life, something okay. that can kind of advance humanity. So, right? Sounds like the menu so, is going to be pretty short there, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, today something historic was going to happen, and it didn't happen, but it might happen on Friday. And what it is is uh, – I don't know if you've heard of this company called SpaceX, uh, but it's a company that's created by uh, Elon Musk, mm -hmm. and uh, they are trying to reduce the cost of space uh, space launch technology so that way we can all ultimately move to Mars and colonize the red planet. Now, what they're doing is so, so there's a big problem with launching a rocket into space is. Like, you take these big traditional launch companies like Lockheed, they have these rockets that cost like $300 million, $400 million a rocket, and then they just crash the thing in the ocean, and that's it. Right, because the right? only people so, who are generally launching things into outer space are governments with no, like, concern for how much money they spend because it's not their money. Go ahead. Or, you know, they're launching they, some sort of thing, and then once it's up there, then they don't have to bring humans back, so making a smooth landing certainly isn't that important, right? Right. Well, Lockheed pretty much does all uh, government launches, and um, and then there's but there's a big market for commercial launch for for commercial satellites. There's mm -hmm. lots of satellites that go up all the time, and if you can get that cost down from three four hundred million dollars to something more reasonable, then you can open up the market even more. For sure. And and eventually, if you can if you can reduce it, you know, a few orders of magnitude, then you could potentially reduce the launch cost enough that you could actually uh, send people in large quantities to Mars and colonize. So the problem is, all right, so, so you're crash landing this rocket, $300 million, so it costs $300 million to launch. So what if you could launch that same rocket 100 times before you had to build a new rocket? If you could amortize the cost over 100 launches. Yeah, it'd um, be a game changer. Like, yeah, certainly. Exactly. And everyone's always said that it's impossible to do, that you can't do it, it's too hard. And what SpaceX is going to do, they, they had to scrub their launch. They're going to launch from Cape Canaveral. They're going to send, um, they have a contract with NASA to send um, some cargo to the International Space Station. And when the, st the first stage separates from the rocket, they've actually designed it such that they can land it 
they can actually uh, possibly land the thing on a barge in the middle of the, in the middle of the Gulf, hmm. um, and then recover the rocket stage, and um, hopefully with minimal refurbishment, refly it. So wow. it'll be the uh, it'll be the like, first time that's ever happened, is what you're saying. Yeah, it, it's never happened before, and it would completely revolutionize space uh, space transport. And uh, they had some issues with the rocket this morning, uh, so they scrubbed the launch, and the next launch window is on Friday. So they're going to make an, another attempt to, to land the stage. Um, whether or not they'll be successful, who knows, but the, the, the testing that they've done, so they've, they've basically, um, on, a couple, on the last couple launches, they brought the stage back and were able to control the stage as they flew it back, but they didn't have anything to land it on, so it just kind of like crashed into the ocean. Mm -hmm. But they were able to control the the stage so it looks like there's probably a pretty decent chance they'll actually be able to successfully land this thing on the barge and recover it all right so they're going to be able to yeah i mean it sounds like uh it sounds like a positive advancement in in space travel i personally think that like seasteading is optimistic at this point so i mm -hmm. mean how quickly being able to like save the first stage rocket you know gets us to living on mars probably not in our lifetimes but you know i'm glad to hear that uh that <clears throat> any anything that uh can uh, make technology cheaper is good news. Well, who knows, Chris? I mean, yeah, I mean, if it's a lot cheaper to do launches into space, that will encourage more space development. And it wasn't only just, it was just a matter of, what, five decades or something like that ago that the, uh, that you know, people landed on the moon. So it's not unreasonable well, to think that it won't be another 20 to 30 years before people are landing on Mars. Well, landing well, on Mars and living on Mars are... are Planets, True. planets apart, literally. <laughs> Musk, Musk says he wants to die on Mars, and uh, granted, he is a billionaire, uh, so he'll probably be able to afford to do it. If he gets but himself up there, it won't be hard to do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Take your helmet he off. Has some early, he has some early designs for this thing called the Mars Colonial Transporter, which he wants to build a rocket that can ferry 100 people at a time to Mars. Wow, that sounds pretty Sounds like quite the party bus. Keep us in the loop on that. Joe, thanks for your call tonight. There's more on the way at 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1 800 881 1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate Free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait, 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 now. wait a minute. <laughs> Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. Yeah! This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Who did you let down today? Your wife? Your kids? Well, how about yourself? Take a look in the mirror. If you're tired of your drug and alcohol problem, you need to fix the problem and right now before you hurt or kill yourself or worse yet, somebody else. Call the addiction specialist now at the Detox and Treatment Helpline 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you have private insurance, we specialize in finding you the right treatment. When you call right now, you'll speak to a recovering addict who understands what you're going through right now. Let us help you break your addiction to drug and alcohol before it's too late. This call is completely confidential and free. So if you have private insurance, take five minutes of your time. Call right now. I promise it'll change your life. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. 800-208-5187. Call right now. 800-208-5187. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course you can bring up anything you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. As long as it's interesting, you can bring up whatever you like. You can bring up whatever you like. If it's not that interesting, you probably aren't going to stick around very long. That much is generally true here on Free Talk Live. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Cantwell. Check out Chris's website, ChristopherCantwell.com. Chris, you've been doing a lot of uh, video chopping. You've been taking the Free Talk Live full three-hour long video files, and uh, you've been making some highlight reels. Yeah, I have, uh, from from the nights that I host, I am pulling the video and then cutting it into uh, little bite-sized segments so mm-hmm. that there's, uh, so there's some short attention span theater out there for you uh, folks who might miss parts of the show. You get you get a little highlight reel. If you go to ChristopherCantwell.com slash FTL, oh, cool. you, you, will find the, uh, you will find the ones that I post to my website, you will see there. I'm posting more of them to On my YouTube, YouTube channel, uh, and that's just if you search uh, YouTube for Christopher Cantwell, you'll find me, or you okay. can find the links to those, uh, you know, obviously through those uh, articles at ChristopherCantwell.com slash FTL. Some of these things... Because, you know, I, I like talk and text. You know, I really like spoken word and discussing ideas is very, very cool. Uh, but some things I feel like you can address in better detail when you're writing a, you know, a, a blog article or something like that. So sometimes, hey, you, you bring up something on Free Talk Live and uh, you might just get it uh, – a, a response to it, a, a more thoughtful one on uh, my website. So, and you've actually inspired Derek J. Freeman to do similar things. He's been cutting up clips from Free Talk Live. I too. saw that. I actually, uh, when I was uh, a project, I'll talk about the project another day. But a project that I told you earlier before the show that I was working on, I actually uh, uh, pulled some stuff from Derek's website, and I saw. I was like, oh, it looks like uh, Derek's doing the same thing. So yeah. it's good. We have more Free Talk Live spreading around the interwebs. And whatnot. I think that's great because I don't have the time to put into doing that. That kind of thing. And and, neither do I, but... <laughs> well, apparently you do. And, and, you know, if you can profit from it, then I think that's great. I mean, we don't believe in intellectual property, so grab yeah. our video, chop it up, and you know, if you if it goes viral and you get paid a big paycheck from YouTube, hey, if you feel like sending some my way, feel free, but there's no hey, obligation. Yeah, I mean, you know, and it gets the it gets the show out there. I mean, I only make like, uh, you know, a couple bucks here and there from it right now, but, you know, one of these things is going to go viral. I you think my know. anti-caller rant is definitely going to be like the one that gets a million the hits. The one you just went on The tonight. one that my anti-caller rant is going to be the one that really makes it big. I, th- I would say it's more like an anti-chronic, an anti-bad chronic, too, because there's like some chronic callers who are better than other chronic callers. Chronic callers being defined as people who call so frequently that they're easily identifiable by their, their voice. You know, your, yours was more of a rant against people who are unoriginal chronic callers. Yeah, I'm, it's, I guess it was like an anti-idiot rant. You know, it's, <laughs> it's really an anti Dumb. Uh, well, ooh, 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 when I don't leave it out. Um, so, uh, yeah, but uh, that's going to be the one. That's going to be the big one, I think. That's going to get a million views on YouTube. It's going to make us all famous. I can't wait. We got Mac. He's on the line in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Mac, you're on Free Talk Live. 
Well, at the risk of getting yelled at by Chris Cantwell, uh, I want to call him out. Um, I hereby accuse Chris Cantwell of being the creator and moderator of a Facebook page called The Troops Are Welfare Whores. And uh, he is uh, pretending to have been born in the 1960s, and he's pretending to have been a 10-year veteran of the U.S. government socialist military and a Gulf War veteran. So, uh, so, so, what say you, Chris Cantwell? Um, you know, I wish I was. Wow. I wish I was the moderator of the Troops Are Welfare Whores because it's a great page. You've seen this page? Oh, I love this page. I, I, I've liked it as ChristopherCantwell.com. Uh, I, I think it is a great page. I think they do. Excellent work, um, pointing out the absolute uh, the 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 welfare horrorism of uh, government agents who are held in such high regard by conservatives. And I'm and I'm really glad that uh, if his name is Mac, I don't know the guy who runs it. I just think it's a great page. Uh, and so if he's Mac or whatever his name, oh, this guy's Mac. This is Mac. But Mac, what makes you say yeah. that you know? Well, why? he's uh, didn't he just say he thought I was Mac or something? I don't know who the guy is that runs no, the page. No, it, it's. Uh... It, it's me that runs the page. It's a it's a joke because there's uh, uh, there's uh, several pages. Uh, if you run a page like that, that's so uh, such an inflammatory name, and the of course the idea of the inflammatory name is to get people to go there. Just like a magazine cover is totally bombastic, so that it gets you to open up and sure, and hopefully engages you once you're in. That's that's sort of the idea. Uh, once we get there, I try to be as calm as possible when I engage these people. They call me every name in the book and accuse me of just all sorts of things. Uh, and I just take it in stride mostly. Once in a while it gets under your skin, but mostly I take it in stride. And I try to be as calm as possible. And it's it's a weird way to spread the ideas of liberty, but I'm telling you, it works, man. I've, I've brought people over, I, and, and veterans, and even active duty, I've brought them over. I got a, I got a private message from a guy who was uh, – Master Sergeant, I believe, if I recall correctly, he was in the Air Force, and he, at first, he private messaged me and told me what a jerk I was and how dare I say this and that, uh, and then at by the, you know, after day three of going back and forth with this guy, he admitted that actually he does agree with about 80 to 90 percent of what I say, and then he said, and here's the secret that you might not be aware of, uh, once you get up into the higher ranks, he's 70, 89, most of the people that you're going to be talking to in the military actually agree with, you know, half or more than half of the things that I say on that page. And by the way, Chris Cantwell, you actually made my face a little bit red. I, I thank you for the uh, for the uh, for the compliments there. That's really great uh, coming from a guy like you. So I appreciate that. Well, well, thank you for putting it together. That that the page cracks me up, and I and I admire your patience because I get calls from these people, and I do not go back and forth with them for three days. I'm like, go hang yourself, leave me alone. So, so this is the page that is uh, called the Troops Are Welfare Horses. What I got about five thousand likes. About five thousand likes. Yeah, we just we broke five thousand right around January first, which was kind of cool. And I think actually Chris Cantwell is mentioning it of it uh, of the page on his Facebook page actually helped push us over because it's like he mentioned it, and then within a couple of days we had like one hundred and thirty likes, and we got up over five thousand. It was really great. I didn't expect the page to get more than three hundred likes. So, so anything past three hundred one is totally gravy for me. So did you know there was apparently another? There's a group on Facebook called the troops are welfare whores hyphen government shills description the troops are welfare yeah, whores that, is the name of a facebook page that is actually serving the purpose of an agent provocateur when you like it or comment on yeah. it you're letting those who care to know that you vehemently oppose their system the hope is that some of you might be goaded into planning violent action in which case you'll be turned in and arrested your response yeah i mean that that's one of the many accusations I get. The funniest, that, that was pretty funny. That's, uh, uh, I don't know who that guy is. He got banned from the page for, for spamming, and then he created that crazy ah, group. Uh, so he's butthurt. Uh, but, yeah, he's butthurt. Uh, but the funniest one to me was when uh, last week when I was accused of the Cantwell, and this guy uh, elsewhere on Facebook on another page, he wrote, if you printed it out, it would have been probably 10 or 20 pages of, of uh, verbiage 
uh, accusing me of being Christopher Cantwell and talking about how we have similar backgrounds <laughs> and how it must be that I'm Christopher Cantwell. And it, I don't know, it just cracked me up. So <laughs> yeah, it was, there was We're this whole Christopher thing. Cantwell yeah. now, buddy. Right, exactly. They're government agents. They're Christopher yeah. Cantwell. They're all sorts of things. <laughs> the paranoia that happens on the Internet is just it's, it's delicious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks, Mac, for the call tonight. Appreciate yeah. it. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. We got Jimmy in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live. Jimmy. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, Jimmy, what's happening? I'm actually the moderator of that Facebook page. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Tell yeah, me more. That guy's taking my credit, and it's irritating. That's the problem with the internet. All kinds of people taking credit for things they didn't do. I think Abraham yeah. Lincoln said that. Yeah, well, I kind of had a crazy day starting off, but it got a little bit better, I guess. And All right. Tell me about it. Uh, early this morning, I had a, uh, I accidentally glued both my nostrils closed. Uh, Ooh, I've know. done that. Were you sniffing yeah, the glue? Was, is that what was going on? Don't ever sniff crazy glue. <laughs> do it. You're yeah. doing it wrong. <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to call tonight because uh, old Christopher Cantwell, he said something about he didn't want nobody to talk about their New Year's revolutions. Well, if you want to have a New Year's revolution, go for it. It's the resolutions yeah. that get me annoyed. But. Well, I want to hear what you got to say here, Jimmy. Hang on. We'll bring it back. We'll find out what Jimmy's New Year's revolution or resolution. I'm not real sure what he was getting at there. We'll find out what he has in moments. Your calls and thoughts are welcome. 855-450-FREE. Still to come, will the FCC vote to make the Internet a so-called public utility? And if so, what will that mean for you? More on the way. It's Free Talk Live. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end of year deals on over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Just Woolery here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System today, complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231, and the Berkey Guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey Light, the Berkey Guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey Guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653. Or order online at goberkey.com that's goberkey.com today Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love and liberty FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free to bring up anything you want right here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So you can take control of the airwaves, much to the chagrin of Christopher Cantwell, who is very upset tonight about that here on Free Talk Live. And you can also join us via Skype. You'll sound better, typically, if you're on Skype. So Skype in at username lrn.fm. And if you like the show, as Chris Cantwell alluded to earlier, you can send five bucks a month in as part of the AMP program to get access to the Facebook group, the AMP Only Facebook group, the AMP Only Forum, as well as the AMP Only Podcast. There's some other perks involved as well that you would get. Um, And also what we do with that five bucks is we invest it into Free Talk Live to get on more radio stations so more people all around the country can hear the inane ramblings of Pete in California and James in Arizona. (laughs) So, yeah. Anyway, go to amp.freetalklive.com. There's some nice perks involved, and uh, if you do like the idea of getting the ideas of freedom onto those stations as well, that is one of the things the AMP program accomplishes. Yeah, I don't know if I'd give five bucks a month to get Pete in California on more radio (laughs) stations, but I do think that Free Talk Live does a lot of very good work, which is why I'm an AMP supporter well before I was a host, and I I think that that's a very good uh, way for you to spend $5. Anybody can afford $5 a month. I mean, if you've ever gone to, if you've been to a fast food restaurant at some point in the last month you can afford five bucks yeah people people like uh you know i have a you know a subscription donation option available as well on christophercantwell.com and people are like what are these days i'm gonna donate and and it's just money's really tight i'm like look it's five dollars you know it's like if you it like if you really can't part with five bucks i understand thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me because i mean you must be so busy trying to make money that uh you know that you shouldn't even be like in front of facebook right now you should be out applying for jobs well if it is that tight then uh maybe cancel your satellite television subscription as we were talking about uh before That'll say that'll give you five bucks for ChristopherCantwell.com, five bucks for Free Talk Live, yeah. and you know several other five dollars for wherever else you want to spend that. Yeah, so. I'd say absolutely. I mean, if you're still consuming, like I don't know, if you're watching Fox News or even The Blaze, you know, <laughs> believe me, you could you could spend your money a lot better than you could do on your cable subscription. Let's go back to Jimmy. He's in Arizona, and Jimmy, you were going to tell us a little bit about your uh, your experience today. So go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, now basically, I just glued my nose shut that was my experience but i wanted to share my uh, new year's resolution what did you oh hold world. on now you glue your glued your nose shut did you go to the hospital or i mean how do you deal with a glued shut nose no i just did a good old oaky blow you know where you a like good old what blow? blow real hard an oaky blow an oaky blow you know like a like where you you know like you, you press one nostril close and then mm. you just blow real hard and shoot snot out of one side yeah, that the, sounds uh, like it could not cost, rocket. But you like did it, this with crazy glue in your nostrils. Yeah. is basically what yeah. happened. That um, might be it's dangerous. A talent. It's a talent. Yeah, I mean, he's probably yeah. he's probably been doing this for a long time. It sounds <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'll admit to have doing uh, to have done that in the shower, but uh, really outside of sniffing the sh- glue. No, 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 no. <laughs> the blow, the oaky blow. The thing. Shower sounds like a terrible place to sniff glue. You could fall down, <laughs> and break your skull. No, I've open. never sniffed glue. Never really been interested in that. Um, but well, no- you're missing out. It's good for you. <laughs> yeah, how about huffing gasoline? You ever done that one? Uh, no. Not while it's on it. fire, but <laughs> fire, yes. Jimmy, thanks well, for the call tonight. Uh, my pres- resolution. Wait, oh, yeah. resolutions. Right. Thank you for yeah. the reminder. A New Year's resolution. Right. I mean, we almost, I, I almost want, avoided it. Are y'all mad it. at me? No. Not, not yet, but go ahead and make it so. Doggone it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> 
So uh, well, here's the thing is why I called y'all is I need some help with my New Year's resolution. Okay. And I need Cantwell. Maybe he can help me out or you. Believe me, you I'm not going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's well, better than a so, good. Uh, nothing's better for inspiration than a little dose of Chris Cantwell. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead. Well, I'm trying to, my New Year's resolution is that I'm trying to finish an activity book that I've been writing for several years, and uh, hmm. it's called the the Fun Time Guide to the Kama Sutra, and uh, it would have like a connect the dot butt plug, uh, a color by number flashlight, and and maybe a find you know find the difference between two pictures of a female body massager, things. Like that um yeah, right yeah so his new year's resolution is to um do finish a coloring book things yeah. it's a coloring book okay like what I, was the you, question you, I don't you know the, the, how, the glue whoa, 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 thing whoa, whoa. it was how, okay uh, wait how is chris Campbell supposed to help you with that i don't understand well i need help i think we cut out yeah, yeah, we heard. probably did. I, I don't know. Jimmy, Jimmy, you're okay sometimes. I've even got you up on my YouTube channel. <laughs> totally failed tonight. Goodbye, sir. Thanks Get out of here. Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. <laughs> yeah, it was good in the first part, though. Al, you're on Free Talk Live listening in Idaho. Well, actually, I'm not in Idaho. I'm in Indiana. Oh, I'm so sorry about that, you Al. Our board, op- place. our board operator blew it. You're looking at Lake Michigan. <laughs> And the ice coming off the lake, and the and the icebergs on the lake that are coming into the shore. There are icebergs <laughs> on the lake? You bet there are. All Man, right, we got to do something about all this global warming. 16, Twenty feet high. So, Al, welcome to Free Talk Live. You're in Indiana now. What do you want to say? Go ahead. Well, what I wanted to, to do is I want to talk about what's something that's become a national joke and disgrace. And Free talk live. <laughs> it is a joke. I mean, it's it's gotten ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, see, what's happened is that anybody who can get a doctor's note can get a permit. For okay. What? For handicap parking. Okay. Okay. If you can get your doctor to sign off on a on a note, you can get a permit. And what's happened is that approximately across the nation, one-third of all cars and drivers now have the permit. Really? Is it that many? Yep. That's that many. Wow. Okay. Most people don't realize it. But, see, what's happened is it's become a senior citizen's entitlement. And the people that it was originally designed for back in the late 1940s when it really started – were people who are wheelchair users and people who have severe disabilities. And yeah, hence need... the picture of the wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, but it's actually called the uh, the international symbol of access. But Right, the idea was it was for people who are legitimately crippled and they have a difficult time getting to the front door of a business. And what you're saying is now they're just handing them out like candy uh, to anybody yeah, that can get a doctor's note. That's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is those of us who are wheelchair users need an access way adjacent to the to the parking place. Mm-hmm. So you need a Otherwise, wider space. We need two parking places. Right. And if you're in a wheelchair accessible van with a lift, you need eight feet out the side of that vehicle in order to get in and out of your vehicle. Sure. So we get these senior citizens. They like to block the access ways. And the guy in the wheelchair gets to sit there and wait for the little old lady to come out with her things. And then she tells me, she people tells- who are wheelchair bound don't really drive. <laughs> well, <laughs> and I'm going, okay, well, I do. <laughs> Well, congratulations yeah. on driving. So uh, a lot of them are let me, very Let me ask you this. So, like, look, I understand. I understand, like, this desire to help the disadvantaged and whatnot, right? But, like, you're going to go to, like, a super Walmart, and you're going to, you know, like, I need to have a parking space. It's right in front of the store because I need to go inside, right? And then you go all the way to the back of the store. You, you're, you're wheeling around the entire store. I mean, it seems to me like... 
I don't know. I don't even care about the handicap parking thing. I'm just being honest with you. So, I don't care. So what you're saying is, Chris, you don't feel like it would make a difference really if they had to park at the back of the aisle. Like, what's the difference? They're wheeling around the store. So what's the big difference if they have to wheel up to the front doors? Right. I tell you, he's telling me that that a third of a third of the population has these handicap stickers. And every single time I go to a place, it's like there's like 20 handicap spark parking spaces and nobody's parked in them. And I'm just like, really? okay, well, I guess I'll go park Where somewhere else. Go shopping. There's Hannaford Market Basket, Walmart. Place where there's bad weather because when it when it gets inclement, uh, I've actually been to restaurants a couple couple of days ago. Uh, a restaurant where the only spots that were taken were the handicapped parking places. Well, it, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, uh, Al. To well, first of all, there's a there. First of all, it's not surprising to me that what you're saying is that this government program has expanded beyond its original intentions, right? That's pretty typical with government programs. They start a government program. The intentions might have been good initially, but then ultimately it expands way beyond the original, you know, envisionment or whatever the visioning was for the the program originally. It becomes a joke. Well, and so, you know, I can understand, and there may be an argument as well that, like, okay, Chris is being, you know, a jerk here, that maybe businesses, even in the absence of this government program, would still want to reserve some spaces for their handicapped customers, and maybe some of them, it's much more difficult to make it into the store. I don't think you understand the real problem, though. The real problem is that if somebody is a wheelchair user... You have to take up two parking places. Yeah, you then explained that em. to us a moment ago. Thank you for the call, then Take Al. up two parking spaces. Bye. <laughs> sick of hearing you whine. And take it to court. I bet the jury would rule in your favor. More coming up. Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, January 6th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.26 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,211 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $276. 
Antiwar.com reports just days after the Israeli government announced it is seizing some $100 million in tax money from the Palestinian Authority to punish them for trying to join the International Criminal Court, the Israeli state-run electric company has announced it will cut off electricity supplies to the Palestinians for non-payment. The Israeli electric company claims the Palestinian Authority owes about $160 million for past shipments and that the company can't keep sending the Palestinians electricity that they can't pay for. The electric company warned Israeli military and spy agencies of the planned cuts, saying it fears cutting off the electricity to Palestinian territory would lead to various responses by the Palestinian population. That's putting it mildly because even though the $100 million Israel stole from the Palestinians over the weekend isn't going to the Israeli electric company, which is itself owned by the Israeli government, one can't help but notice that it is a big part of why they're not going to be able to pay their debt. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot fppradio.com. Reuters reports CIA Inspector General David Buckley, who investigated a dispute between the agency and Congress over the handling of records of the CIA's detention and interrogation activities, is resigning effective January 31st. The CIA said in a statement that Buckley, who has served as the agency's internal watchdog for more than four years, was leaving the CIA to pursue an opportunity in the private sector. Officials at both the CIA and on Capitol Hill said his departure was unrelated to politics or anything he had investigated. Civil Liberties Advocates said the timing of Buckley's exit was unfortunate. Christopher Anders of the American Civil Liberties Union said the CIA Inspector General is one of the few people who has tried to impose some accountability on the CIA at a time when the White House and many in Congress are failing to do their oversight jobs. Danielle Bryan, executive director of the Project on Government Oversight, said Buckley had raised some serious concerns about the conduct of the CIA in trying to thwart the Senate Intelligence Committee. The lack of repercussions is very troubling, and his departure so soon afterwards is also troublesome. Buckley's resignation came as the outgoing chairwoman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senator Dianne Feinstein, issued a series of recommendations to prevent the future use of torture by U.S. agencies. Feinstein recommended that Congress change U.S. laws to explicitly prohibit torture and to ban the CIA from holding detainees for anything but brief periods. She also recommended that the Director of National Intelligence issue orders prohibiting contractors from conducting interrogations and directing, evaluating, or managing spy programs. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports Cheryl Atkinson, who said she left CBS because of the network's liberal bias, is seeking $35 million for alleged computer hacking by the Obama administration. The lawsuit names the Justice Department and Postal Service as defendants, along with unidentified U.S. government employees. Atkinson told Politico her computer was accessed when she was working on stories embarrassing to President Obama, including the Benghazi attack, the Fast and Furious weapons program, and Obamacare. She charged that computer forensics experts had discovered certain violations of her constitutional rights based on information implicating the federal government in illegal electronic monitoring and surveillance of her home and business computers and phones from 2011 to 2013. Atkinson also said the FBI investigated her allegations of computer hacking but never interviewed her. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. 
Well, today was an historic occasion in Pennington. That's right, Diane. The entire town turned out to honor Paul Webster, the area's one gay man with Pennington's first ever gay pride parade. Paul, a 33-year-old hardware store owner, was too shy to ask for a parade, but that didn't stop almost 2,000 residents from showing their support for his homosexuality. Mayor Sue Hallinan organized the parade and even chipped in some of her own money to pay for decorations. Well, I was channel surfing one day and I came across a program about the gay pride. Next time I went to the hardware store, I said, Paul, we're going to throw you a parade. And he just said, oh, please don't do that. I don't want that. I beg you. He just didn't want us to go to the trouble. Uh, he doesn't want to ride on the penis float. Uh, he gets motion sickness, so uh, we're going to have him hold the reins instead. And Penningtonians have already decided on a fairy tale theme for next year's parade. Oh, that'll be great. And if Paul has a boyfriend, they can both be dressed up as kings. Terrific idea. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves here. Toll free. Is the internet going to be deemed a public utility by the FCC? And if so, what will that mean for you? We will talk about that. You can also take control of the airwaves here. The we includes me, Ian. And me, Chris Cantwell. ChristopherCantwell.com is his website. You can go yeah. there and read various articles as well as watch some clips from Free Talk Live. Yeah, and if you want to watch me make fun of crippled people or <laughs> religious people, you know, you just go over there and send me some money or something. You know, Chris, you got to be careful uh, making fun of crippled people. Before you know it, you'll break a leg or something like that, and uh, you'll be the guy who's de having to deal with con conflicts with the elderly, as that last caller was. He was describing uh, the frustrations that he was experiencing, trying to park in the, uh, the crippled spaces, where apparently a lot of elderly folks who are not uh, infirmed are parking, because he says that now anybody who gets a doctor's note can get one of those tags. It's worse than Free Talk Live. <laughs> handicap tags. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it would be uh, somewhat ironic for the, the universe to give you that experience. And it would be actually fairly entertaining as well, because you'd likely record video of your interactions with these elderly folks taking the, uh, the, the space. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you know what I would do is I would just, I wouldn't even bother. I would just take up the two parking spaces, right? Like, okay, fine. <laughs> like, I need to I need to park somewhere so I can go into Walmart. And the guy's saying, he's like, well, the thing is that you have you have to take up two parking spaces. I'm like, then go ahead and do it. Like, somebody already parked in the handicapped yeah. space, go take up two parking spaces. And if a cop gives you a ticket, then go into court and be like, I'm a cripple and this guy won't even let me have right? a blah. Yeah, go ahead, do that. That'll be a blast. And you know what? You know, look... Don't get me wrong. I prefer to be able to walk and stuff like that, but I don't know. I was going to say something funny and I'd fail. It is nice <laughs> to be able to uh, to have our faculties, and uh, I certainly appreciate having mine. So toll-free number is 855-453. The Federal Communications Commission, according to Grover Norquist and Patrick Gleason, and they were writing for Reuters.com. They're in the middle of a high-stakes decision that could raise taxes for close to 90% of Americans. The commission is considering whether to reclassify broadband as a telecommunications service, and in doing so, Washington would trigger new taxes at the state and local level. The agency would like to make Internet service a public utility, placing broadband under Title II regulation of the Communications Act of 1934. This move would make broadband subject to New Deal-era regulation and have significant consequences for U.S. taxpayers. Under the decision to reclassify broadband, Americans would face a host of new state and local taxes and fees that apply to public utilities. These new levies, according to the Progressive Policy Institute, would total $15 billion annually. On average, consumers would pay an additional $67 for landline broadband and $72 for mobile broadband each year. So you're looking at, you know... Five, six bucks a month extra on your internet bill just because they would change the regulatory structure under which the internet providers exist. I guess I don't know if uh, if they go into this, but I mean, it sounds like because th this the idea of the internet being a public utility is not necessarily news, right? Like whether they go through with it, it sounds like they're making us a, a more significant move on, That's on right. doing it. Um, but they may it sounds, actually vote on it. Yeah, they they you know they've been trying to do the net neutrality thing forever now, and that's basically just a big old scam for the government to regulate your your internet connection and decide what your provider can and cannot do. Yeah, I think it's really scary personally. And right. libertarians who support net neutrality, I think, need to think twice on that one. 
Yeah, that that drives me crazy. Every time they every time that thing hits the headlines, you see you see, I, like my Facebook libertarian echo chamber fills up with pro government propaganda, and I'm like, stop it, you morons! Yeah, why would a libertarian? Why would somebody who understands that the state is a tool of violence and that everything it touches it tends to ruin? Why would they want to turn to the state? To try to to try to uh, the, under the crazy belief that it's somehow going to make their internet access better. Corporations, man. <laughs> That's Look, what it is. I don't like corporations either. No doubt. I mean, they're, the corporation is just a uh, essentially a protection racket for people that are politically connected and have enough money to you know set themselves up in this manner. Uh, yeah, I'm certainly no fan of that idea. Although I'll use a corporation if I need to because well that's the system that we're in yeah. and you know if it can help protect me from. Uh, from other corporations or whatever, okay, that's yeah. fine. Uh, but the idea of the corporation is essentially to protect somebody from legal liability for their actions. Exactly. And I'm not necessarily a huge fan of that it's idea. It's a legal fiction to avoid responsibility when doing business. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Critique the corporations, no doubt about it. But really, isn't the problem with net neutrality or the problem with this whole concept of the government taking over that the government created the problem in the first place. It's one of those classic things where the government, what was it, Harry Brown said back uh, during his presidential campaign, the government breaks your legs, hands you two crutches, and then and expects you to be grateful for it. Yeah, it's uh, uh, and then nine scariest words, you know, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. It's like you know that things are about to get worse as soon as they do that. So uh, right, it's but thanks- that's but that's the idea behind it that the internet like you have a right to it or something you know and it's like look well when it's considered a public utility it will likely start to I mean it's there are already people propo- uh, promoting that idea out there and if the government gives them more credibility by deeming this a utility then it'll be in the ranks of water and you know in the ranks of power which many people believe folks have a right to yeah I mean look uh, I'm 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 I. And this is one of these things that you get into it with the liberals, and they're just like, oh, you don't want – like right now, like water's a public utility, right? Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, when you uh, when you talk badly about the government, they're like, well, you just want dirty water. And bad, you know, and it's like, no, actually, I'm pretty sure that we can figure out a way to get water without violence, right? <laughs> like people in – you know, people drill wells on their land and do all sorts of different things to the, get water. The worst water I've ever had comes from government taps. Right. And and so, you know, we're we're in a situation now that the government is basically going to take over the Internet. And in, t- and in 10 or 15 years, if you say anything bad about the government, people are going to be like, well, what, you don't like the Internet? And I'm like, well, dummy, we had Internet, you know, long before the government took it over and it was working out pretty good. And now, you know, we're in a situation where, hey, if you ever see a website get taken off the Internet, one of two things happen. Either somebody didn't pay their bill. Or the government took it down. Mm-hmm. You know, this is how censorship happens. It's not something that the government is failing to prevent. It's something that they're doing. And I can't stand the stupidity that goes into people who think that they're going to have the government solve something. It's ridiculous. Back to especially libertarians who should know better. Yeah. Uh, back to the story from Reuters here. Proponents of broadband reclassification, including the left of center organization Free Press, claim that it would not result in higher taxes or fees. The recently extended Internet Tax Freedom Act, they assert, prohibits state and local taxation of Internet service. This is incorrect, however. The act does not apply to telecom related fees. Free Press and other broadband reclassification proponents also say the new taxes and fees can be prevented if the FCC designates broadband as an interstate service. A Progressive Policy Institute report explains why this is also incorrect. Quote, When the commission previously considered the jurisdiction of Internet traffic, it determined that such traffic was largely interstate, but, quote, jurisdictionally mixed. Don't you love this legalese nonsense? States routinely tax uh, jurisdictionally mixed services that are classified as interstate for the purposes of regulation. For example, wireless services may not be regulated by state public utility commissions, but they are subject to a host of state and local taxes and fees. In several states, interstate wireless revenues are subject to taxation. So basically they're saying here that uh, the advocates of this change are saying, no, it won't result in higher taxes. And the analysis that Grover Norquist is making is saying, yeah, actually it will be higher taxes. Yeah, I I can tell you right now. So like I have uh, the Straight Talk Wireless, and I originally signed up for it when I was in New York. Right. Now if I – 50 bucks a month or whatever, 45. $45 a month, unlimited talk, text, and web. Now if I go to Walmart in New Hampshire and I buy – the service card in the Walmart store. Mm-hmm. It's forty five bucks. That's right. It's flat no you know, sales no tax. No sales tax, no uh cell phone taxes, whatever. 
Uh, if I go and I do it online, if or if I do it over the phone, it's like forty nine dollars because they're still smacking me with New York taxes and regulatory fees that that are imposed by the state of New York, not by the federal government or anybody huh. else. So uh, you know, if you think that you're going to, why I don't, are you getting New York taxes? Because the phone, it's a New York area code. It was registered oh. in New York. I don't know if I, I can like I'm get paying, it out I, of there or something like that. I think I'm paying some kind of tax on that too. Yeah. Like, because uh, I do the uh, the credit card renewals on the Walmart Straight Talk, because that's yeah. what I have as well. And I know it's not 45. It's more like 47, 48. If you walk like into that. Walmart, you buy the card, you won't pay that. But if you're paying hmm. by credit card, they're whacking you with all the that fees. That sucks. Yeah. Well, it's just convenient, you know? I don't go to Walmart often enough to get the damn cards, but... I guess it's worth it to me to pay for the convenience, but uh, it's nice to know you can get around Maybe it. Maybe call Walmart, change your address with them or something, because you might, you might be able to get away. But my address is in New Hampshire. More coming up here in moments. 855 450 free. You take control. It's Free Talk Live. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. At the end of the 19th century, many intellectuals abandoned the idea that people have natural rights, believing instead that freedom was a privilege. This idea inspired a generation of activists called progressives who argued that the Constitution's principles had become obsolete. Progressivism was best expressed by Supreme Court Justice Brandeis. Individual rights, he said, must be remolded from time to time to meet the changing needs of society. Our founders knew that if rights can be remolded, it meant you have no rights at all. The income tax and the prohibition of alcohol were just two ideas progressives advocated. The Constitution stood in their way, but they argued it could simply be reinterpreted. This living constitution idea triumphed in the Supreme Court in the 1930s, and its impact remains with us today. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Khalid lives in Gaza. He makes his living as a taxi driver. The engine in his old beater blew up. Now, he makes good money driving people in his cab, but he couldn't afford the $1,300 for a new engine. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the engine, and he's back on the road. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, 
Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you're welcome to comment on whatever's on your mind. And if you would like to share your thoughts on this proposal, apparently to regulate the Internet as though it is a public utility, to me that just sounds like a scary idea. And as Chris Campbell pointed out, it's sort of in the, the vein of the, this idea that the Internet is somehow a right, some kind of human right. And, of course, there are 4 billion people in the world that don't have access to the Internet. They don't have the ability to get anywhere near uh, an Internet access point. And, of course, when you say that something is a right, then that means that someone else has an obligation to provide it to you. Or and at least that's the that's the math that government uses to, to take money from uh, protective people and to go and uh, give it. Well, to right. somebody else, and of course, you know, I, I could just, I could just imagine. I mean, is that is that the number? Four billion people don't have internet. More than four billion. Yeah, it's actually more than fifty percent of the world's population. They're just going to be running copper all over like third world countries, trying to give them fifty six k dial up. <laughs> yeah, just, just, and then there's just, oh my god, I can't believe the mess, the mess that that idea creates. Just the the right to internet. You oh mean? yeah, I mean. I've heard them talk so much about like because there's already I as I understand it there's already projects like there's already been a lot of subsidies to like get internet into other places or get yep. like faster internet access they into do, they're doing it in New Hampshire are they yeah there's a government project called Fast Roads where Fa oh roads yeah where they're bringing the internet roads. they're bringing fiber internet to uh, rural areas of New Hampshire I mean if I were in a crappy area of New Hampshire that had no internet and that was the only option for me, I'd probably take it. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I can understand why you would, but then, you know, maybe like when you're planning your move to New Hampshire, you know, like find out who the internet provider is before you go and like totally spend a that. bunch of money on some property. And like, I can't, it, it, it just baffles the mind. It's like, yes, I understand that's part of the reason why your house was cheaper, right? Like mm. you went to a place that had nothing. You live no in the middle of nowhere. Right. So don't live in the middle of nowhere or live in the middle of nowhere and get a satellite or a, a cell or, you know, a, a big antenna on top of your house or do something. You don't get to steal other people's money so that Verizon can go run fiber optics out into your little underground bunker, you Alex Jones nut. So the stories from Reuters, uh, Grover Norquist, and Patrick Gleason are looking at the proposal here to regulate the Internet as though it is a public utility. And they're saying here that this is actually going to result in higher taxes. So if you've got a $50 Internet bill, you're probably looking at another 5 bucks a month in charges uh, just to fulfill the various different tax requirements that will come in because it will now be a utility. Right. And those are the estimates that happened before the government program starts. Before right? they get their hands all over right. it. Once, once they go, get in there and there's a bunch of guys in, in cable trucks sitting on the side of the highway drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes instead of doing their jobs, and all of a sudden you're going to realize, like, oh, wait, it costs a little bit more once you had the government go out and do this idiotic, ridiculous program it's going to help nobody. The telecommunications industry has invested more than $1.2 trillion on broadband infrastructure since 1996. As a result, roughly 87% of Americans have access to broadband. It would be foolish for the government to discourage the significant investment required to maintain, expand, and improve this infrastructure by subjecting broadband to circa 1930s regulation. I mean, can you imagine... Can you imagine? They had to do in the 1990s a, a major update to the various different regulations simply because, you know, we don't have pole-style phones anymore for the most part. Uh, or whatever it was that came before pole-style where you had to talk to the operator and have her patch a cord in somewhere before you could <laughs> talk to somebody. But I guarantee you some of those— Hello, Dolores, can you connect right? me to Janet? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I guarantee you the, some of that stuff's probably still on the books. Some of the old regulations that they wrote back in the 1930s. 30s, they're literally talking about applying those to the internet. 
That's a scary idea. Like, <laughs> you and I don't even have any understanding, Chris. I mean, we're reading this article by Grover Norquist. I doubt he has taken the time to read any of these regulations. I mean, Congress Who, sure as heck hasn't. Yeah, nobody reads this stuff. And then, you know, oh, well, we're just going to – it should be a public utility now because yeah. people like it. People need it. People use it. Well, and then, then all of this other stuff that has never applied to it as far as regulations is going to apply to the Internet. And then, and then here's And then here's what we're going to see in 20 years. It's going to be government PSAs. We're going to see public service announcements telling people that they need to conserve bandwidth, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be like, you you have to stop with the movies and the Netflix and the YouTubes and the whatnot and only update your Facebook status twice a day because everybody, the the internet is for everybody and you're using too much of it and the 1% have to pay their fair share and hang yourself. (laughs) You're probably right with that, Chris Cantwell. You know, I think you you may be spot on with that prediction. What happens every summer in in any place that gets warm anyway? Right, in Los Angeles or wherever. Always. Oh, you have to turn, turn your air conditioners off. You're causing brownouts, right? Why? Because you're a public utility and you don't have the market incentive to provide people with the products that they demand. That's like, it was so funny when I was down in New York, there's like a commercial, right? Like I heard on the radio, they're like, why would Con Edison tell you to lower your bill? We're trying to sell a product, right? And they're like, because we care about you and want to save you money. No, it's because you are incapable of meeting the demand because you're a public utility. And they're telling them, don't water your lawns. Don't water your lawns. It's a drought. There's because, a drought. Like, be, there's not enough water in the world, you morons. Well, because there's limited competition. I mean, usually with these public utilities, there's one of them, and that's it. They're being given a government monopoly, essentially, over a certain service area. And not only that, but they're usually prohibited to raise rates without government permission. Exactly. So one of the things that might happen in a market is that if there really was a shortage, like if the company had failed to find different sources of water, you know, for whatever reason, then they could always raise their rates. Like, oh, crap, there's a shortage. Let's raise our rates. And then if the rates go up, then people will be more diligent about how much water they use. But they can't do that likely under a government regulatory scheme and or the government is just plain running the water system like they do here in Keene, New Hampshire, where fortunately we don't have these problems because there's plenty of water uh, around here. But in other places, really, it's just the failure of the state or whoever it is they've deemed to operate this system to do the business in the right way, to keep their business operating and to keep their customers happy. Exactly. When a thing becomes scarce... Economics tells us that the price goes up, and if your and if your company is incapable of meeting market demand and at any price, right, then then some competitors going to come in and do it, right. right? If your if electricity goes up to I don't whatever it is, you know, uh, if if electricity rates triple and there's a competitor in the market, then somebody's going, hey, <laughs> I can get a lot of money for electricity over there. I better start selling generators or whatever it is that you have. I mean, we had it in in New York in a Hurricane Sandy thing, they were rationing gas gasoline because they couldn't raise the prices of it and it's like look people i understand that you don't want to pay more for stuff you know i understand you want things to be easy but that's not how it works let's go to jim he's in albuquerque you're on free talk live calling from or listening to kiva hey jim hey how you guys doing welcome you're on the air didn't i just tell you not to do (laughs) this Hey, you know what? First off, first time I want to tell you guys, I was just telling the, the guy that streamed me, you know, I've only listened, been listening to you guys for about two or three weeks now, and I love you guys, man. Oh, we love you too, you buddy. Now get on with your points. <laughs> <laughs> See, they like it when you abuse hey, you know, them, I'm telling you. They're like women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chris. Oh, come on, buddy. <laughs> it's a, you're, you're a blast so far. Let's go. Okay, all right. Hey, you know, you know this. This this thing is not new with what the government is doing. You know that, right? Of course not. Of I course mean, not. I mean, I mean, I mean, Mall, Mall Bell, which is Century Lake here in the Mount in the Rocky Mountain West. I mean, we've been sub, we've been subsidizing through Century Lake or what used to be Mall Bell out here. We've been subsidizing the, the ranchers and the farmers. Oh, uh, the phone, phone system. Stuff. Hang on, Jim. I'll bring you back to get uh, your full comments here in a moment. The phone system, the regula- regulations are ridiculous. It's free talk live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. 
just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Superbeta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate Free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. A report confirms that many Iraqis are still holding a petty grudge about the U.S. invasion. An advanced alien civilization discovers an uninhabitable planet. And a single woman has a Facebook profile picture with her sister. This is The Onion Week in Review. A groundbreaking study published Monday in the Journal of the American Medical Association confirmed that it is impossible to lose weight. No one has ever done it, and those who are trying should give up immediately. Researchers said that findings conclusively prove that shedding excess weight has never happened, changing your physical appearance is impossible, and that all sorts of exercises, personal training regimens, and diets will never, ever work. Well, our test results conclusively prove that if you're going to the gym to lose weight, you will fail. You can work out every day and eat nothing and you still wouldn't lose an ounce. Skinny people will stay skinny. Overweight people will be overweight. That's just how it is. In other news, an area man is outraged. His private information is being collected by someone other than advertisers. And a crowd cheers as this 93-year-old up finally graduates from college. This is the Onion News Network. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It is night one of two with Christopher Cantwell in studio here tonight. Thanks, Chris, for coming in tonight. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Your website is ChristopherCantwell.com, and you can get all kinds of... Uh, kinds of whoa. Let's take a mute on that one. Uh, you can get all kinds of uh, Christopher Cantwell-related stuff like articles and videos, and you just started up once again Some Garbage Podcast. It is back that, for 2015. That's, that's right, it is. And we're going to doing it uh, at least Fridays from 5 to 7, and actually this week I will be doing a Thursday episode. Uh, Marcel is in town visiting us, a.k.a. Gay K47. I have so, not heard. No, yeah. what, this is new to I me. I haven't actually announced the, I haven't actually like scheduled the show. I was going to, because I wasn't sure if it was going to be episode 18 or 19, because I was going to try to do one sooner with Rapture again, because I want to do the whole free will determinism thing that we now, started on here. Marcel, I, uh, I've met him previously a couple times. He came back. He's visiting Keene, and uh, he's considering making a move here. He's here applying for some job yeah. of some I, sort. I 
believe he's up here for an interview. Actually, he's already applied. That happened he today. To him, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I actually saw Marcel on this list of like the top forty under forty, which is like a list that Tony Styles came up with. He's a liberty-oriented talk show host. You were on that list, Chris Cantwell. I'm sure was. I was on that list. Derek J. Freeman was on that list, and Marcel was on that list. What is he? His what is he known for? Honestly, I I don't know. He seems like I, a nice guy to me. I, I mean, like I don't know what he's so much what he's done in the way of activism. Mm-hmm. I know he's got a pretty big like Facebook audience, and he's and he's been in like the libertarian brutalism Facebook groups, and it's fought in like. Um, I I love a politically incorrect gay guy. Right? Like he's, okay, he's, Is that, he, so he's like he's like a gay libertarian. So that's yeah. So I don't know. I I like. I mean, my Facebook experience is so selfish. Like I'm just re- seeing what people I- interact with like, me on. Right. You? <laughs> so like I don't I don't entirely know. But I mean, he's I know that he's built up some some bit of a following, and he's coming here, and I'm looking forward to having him. I think it's blast. exciting because you know what? As soon as Marcel makes the move to Keene. Uh, presuming that's what happens, presuming he gets the job, etc. He does seem excited about coming here. Yeah. That will give us uh, 10% of the top 40 under 40, the top uh, 10% of the top 40 living in Keene, New Hampshire. Yeah, I think that, that uh, that's awesome news. I mean, that's an indicator that there's something happening here. Well, right? because like, I mean, you know, obviously, I mean, Tony's a media guy. He's a radio guy, the Tony Styles show. Mm-hmm. I think he's also with GCN. He is now, yeah. And, uh, and you know, where do people come if they want to produce media in New Hampshire or or anywhere? If they want to produce libertarian media, they come to Key, New Hampshire, because this is where it's happening. The undisputed liberty media capital of the world. John Bush says it is disputed. John Bush says he has disputed it out of Austin, Texas, and so we can no longer claim that it is no, undisputed. No, 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 no. Look, John Austin <laughs> is the liberal media capital of Texas, Okay. <laughs> I think he's got it a little confused, Libertopia. Well, to be clear, though, I mean, he, he you know, he's disputed it, so therefore you can't say it's dis- undisputed. Okay, anymore, all right. So right? now, so now there's a completely frivolous dispute on the table. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, well, anyway, John's doing a great job with the Liberty Beat, which is a great daily news package coming out of I'm, Austin. I'm not even a fan of John, but I'll I'll tell you, yeah, Liberty Beat Liberty is good. Liberty awesome. Yeah. All right, let's go back to Jim. He is uh, still with us here in Albuquerque, new to the show or newish. You've been listening for the last few weeks since we've been. Uh, brand new or I guess rebrand new to the airwaves there in uh, Albuquerque because we actually were on Kiva once upon a time several years ago and they brought us back which I'm always happy about go ahead Jim so yeah so you know actually so actually no a number of things more about this whole thing I mean I, I'm not a big government person but I, I do believe in fairness in business and you know CenturyLink CenturyLink's been 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 stuck with these high taxes for like ever, and then we have Comcast Cable, which also provides phone service, but they don't have to pay for all those 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 tax or a, a customer doesn't have to pay for all those taxes having Comcast Cable that's as true. opposed to a customer that and, and you sit there and go like, well, where the hell's the fairness even as a customer? Because maybe I prefer CenturyLink over Comcast Cable, but I'm, I can't go have CenturyLink because Comcast Cable. Is providing it cheaper, and for what reason? The because fairness to answer your, to answer your question, you said, "Where's the fairness?" And, and I'm and I'm going to answer your question very plainly. The, the fairness went out the window the moment that the government started controlling public utilities. Once mm. they were like, "Hey, telephone company, you're part of us now." <laughs> right, they're the kingmaker. No, no, no I, and I understand that. You're right, but it's not just in. It's not just with the government. It's like literally with that, with everything in our lives. I, I worked for the grocery industry forever, and for and for even the grocery companies, whether it be Kroger, whether it be Safeway, uh, what used to be Albertsons, for them to do business, even in these smaller communities throughout each state, even they have to subsidize those stores in those small towns by you as a, as a customer in the city. You are paying for a little bit more. You may not see it, but you are paying a little bit more really? for every product that you buy. Oh, absolutely. You're saying, big city, you're saying big city grocery stores subsidize the existence of smaller, uh, a smaller a, yep. the a, same a, store a, chain a, in a smaller area? I, I can see where, he, where yeah, he's going with it. In, in, including and up to guarantee Walmart is the same way. Well, yeah, the, the idea being that it's probably... Because it boils... It boils down to one thing, guys. It boils down for these for these big corporations to do business in these small these small uh, communities. It boils down to transportation costs, and they have to find a way to cover that transportation cost 
to get into these smaller communities. Why open up? Them. Why open a store in an area that's not viable economically and, and support it with the profits from a store in an area that is? What's the point of that? Hey, well, I can tell you right now, well, I, Trinidad, which is on the, on the borderline between Colorado and New Mexico, that Walmart in Trinidad, that draws in all the, all the, all the business from, from farmers and ranchers in all the small towns, mm-hmm. probably within a 50 to a 75-mile radius. So it pays for, for them very much so. Well, the, the, the idea being, I think what he's saying is so like it costs more to get products to market in these more remote places. Sure. So then if Walmart's selling the product, if Walmart is selling a product in, say, Keene, New Hampshire, right, and they're selling it for the same price in, say, I don't know, Tamworth. Right. Okay. Something further out. The the margin is probably not the same, right? Because I mean, mm-hmm. there's you know there's some increased added expense as opposed to, and and probably not the same amount of demand or whatever like that. So I mean, I guess what he's saying it's not subsidizing like uh, I don't know like we think a subsidy with the case of you know coercion and stuff like that, but it's just the 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 company is making you know sort of a decision to divert resources from one place to another. Where well, it right. was still doesn't make much sense to me, right? Like I mean, it's. If the store doesn't work, why, why, it doesn't why, work. Why, why, why wouldn't it? Look at McDonald's. You can look at McDonald's or Burger King. And they're in every little Yahoo town from coast to coast. And you sit there and go, why would they have this freaking McDonald's out in the middle of flipping nowhere? Yeah, but a lot of those are franchised. I don't know about McDonald's, but I know a lot of Burger Kings are franchise. And so well, that, the Burger King that's franchised would not be getting a subsidy from corporate. I mean, that's not going to happen. I Not that it would be a subsidy, but I wonder. Hmm. I, I don't know how that part works, but the grocery industry, like I said, I worked you work in, in the forever, business. And yeah, so I mean, did. I'm taking yeah, a word oh, for oh, it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I used to work in it forever. Huh. And I can tell you for an in fact, in, in, in fact those, those, the, the, your ads that you get in, I don't know what they are back east, but we get our ads every Wednesday, and those are called BOGO items. And those, one, those one. BOGO items, yeah, those BOGO items. Those are the same price in every store throughout every community. Sure. Somewhere in the store, they're making up the price in the in the bigger cities for when you go into that store to buy. You're you're making it the the, the corporation's making it up somewhere within that mm-hmm. store to help subsidize those smaller uh, stores in those towns. I guess you know once something gets to be a you know uh, what is it Steiger's law like once an organization grows to be like a certain size it's going to spend more and more of its time and resources on just you know taking care of the organization as opposed to like the business of the organization. So I suppose like these companies are sort of um, you know presuming presuming that his math is right. I I I'm, I don't have any data well, in front it, of me, but it, 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 the it, it, the idea being that basically the company is just concerned with expanding itself and thus is is doing Doing things that might not be the most economically efficient things, and so the stores that are making a lot of money are sort of, you know, not that these not these stores They're propping not, them up, huh? Yeah, propping them up, and I and I don't think that these stores are losing money wherever they are. Don't get me wrong, but it's probably no, no, the pricing will. would be different if not for the uh, the whole uh, organization. Okay, fair enough. Jim, well, thanks. And, and the other thing, the other, well, hold on, one Quick. more thing, and the other thing you guys got got to remember also by them doing this. If you're a person that's in these rural areas, when you come around these big cities, that makes a big impression on you. So where's the first place you're going to go to when you're inside so of a big it's city? So it's branding yeah, as well. That's a good point. Thanks, Jim. More coming up. Geico presents Fan Mail to a Pig. Dear Maxwell, first off, hope you are well. And I am. Seems like all you do is promote Geico's web and app abilities. And while I really enjoyed your last commercial where you talked about how I could take a photo of my VIN number and add it to my account all via my Geico app, I've got to think it doesn't leave you much time for anything else. Do tell. Sincerely, Miranda Morgan. Well, Miranda, thank you for asking. And this Geico spokes pig does have time to do other things. For instance, I do a lot of VIN scanning to add a car. Just to tap away on the Geico app. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial. The fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Award-winning Nobel Prize nominee Dr. Joel Wallach will be speaking January 7th at Faith Tabernacle Church, 2025 4th Street, North Minneapolis, and January 8th, Shiloh Temple, 1201 West Broadway Avenue, North Minneapolis. For more information, call 763-291-5052 
or 763-221-8432. That's 763-291-5052 or 763-221-8432. Mom, I can't do my math homework. I just don't get it. I hate math. (sighs) I've always tried to be a good mother, but when it came to Jamie's math, I was at a loss. Then a friend told me about Math Made Easy DVDs. Concepts are simplified in an easy way to follow and review, and students can learn at their own pace in the convenience of home. Listen, in the frustration, call Math Made Easy. Call now, 1-800-USA-MATH. That's 1-800-872-6284. Or visit us at mathmadeeasy.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Take control of the airwaves here. We're going to put whatever's on your mind. With you tonight, it's Ian and Cantwell, and join us online at freetalklive.com. If you get online, you really need to can, uh, be concerned about your privacy, and one of the ways you can protect your privacy is by using ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your data online, meaning your internet service provider, whether they're heavily regulated by the government or not, will not know what you're doing online because it's encrypted, whatever it is you're doing. Right now, they're probably logging the website you visit, the search terms you enter, maybe keeping those logs up to five years, and, of course, handing them right over to the state whenever they come knocking. You can put a stop to that by grabbing Pro XPN software for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Linux users, you don't even need to download Pro XPN. There's a different setup process for you, but you can do it all by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started there. You can start for free. Try out Pro XPN. XPN to see what you think, and when you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world you can access, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites, all with ProXPN's premium account, which you can get at a seat, uh, sweet 50% discount by using code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and the number 50. Just go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started. And by the way, once you're done with your first year of ProXPN, you can continue at the same discounted rate. So that 50% discount is good for the lifetime of your account. So go check it out at proxpn.com slash FTL. It's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose but your privacy. Use promo code FTL50 at proxpn.com slash FTL and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go to James in Arizona. James, you're on Free Talk Live. Oh, no, like not again. Go ahead, James. Give us your wisdom. 
Say something funny. You're the one who anyway, called the program. Speaking, you say something that's of value to our audience speaking or get dollars. lost. Say something interesting. Well, Go. Come on, brilliant guy. Go call Ian Minister and say something. Go. What do you want? I'm not the one that calls myself a minister. Your professional liar that you're sitting next to does. And why he's not in jail, I can't. I, I can't believe that the city of Keene hasn't done so. By the way, oh, why don't you have a nice cry about it? All right, get, 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 just forget it. He, he, uh, you know what? <laughs> At least fix your internet connection before you call up here and bloviate with nonsense. You gotta, I, he's I, got a you, terrible connection. He's got a, and he's got a terrible brain and a terrible <laughs> mouth, and I've seen the text messages he sends us. His <laughs> writing skills are worse than his talking, and he doesn't even have an internet connection. Go to hell, <laughs> moron. <laughs> Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Greg is in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Greg. Greg. Oh, no, we lost Greg. Maybe he was afraid you were going to yell at him. <laughs> it's like, oh, no, this is how they're going to treat the callers. I better hang up now. No, but seriously, James has a terrible internet connection. Yeah, Half the time, his calls drop out. Look, I don't know. Look, I don't I don't know who's tuning in for the first time. I mean, we're. I'm usually not this mean to callers. James is a guy who calls in every week, and we just got done doing this in a previous segment that I'm sick of these guys that they call in, they have nothing to say, they're repeating themselves, and James is just one of these moron, bloviating fools who has nothing interesting to say, and now we can't even hear what he's saying because his internet connection is messed up. So our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If Give a call if you'd like yeah. to be abused tonight. <laughs> Just go ahead, call in, say something stupid. I'll call you a fool, and then you'll feel better about yourself. So in other news, Chris, we had a guy call earlier tonight. You haven't yelled, yelled at everybody that's called in, just uh, James and James and, and James and Pete. And Pete. I sort of I, I gave the cripple a little bit of a hard time, but I didn't yell at him. And then the then the other guy was like, "How you doing?" And I'm like, "Did I not tell you to do?" You know. So I was I've been I'm ornery today. You are. I don't I, I you know I got to. I gotta relax or something. You need some sex. That's what you need, Chris. Can't I do. I definitely need some sex. <laughs> um, so we were talking about regulations, etc. But also, somebody called in earlier to ask, "Well, what do we think about the Fox News Dish situation?" And honestly, we didn't know anything about it. I had just seen the headlines that Dish was not carrying Fox News, and according to MediaBistro.com. Uh, the si the two sides of this story are that, uh, well, Fox News is claiming that it's Dish's fault and Dish is claiming that it's Fox's fault. Fox is claiming that Dish has agitated their audience and uh, apparently, you know, their Fox listeners or viewers, have thousands of them have sent emails to Dish to object about this. But Dish says that it's Fox that has pulled the two sides apart. Their SVP of programming says, quote, it's like we're about to close on a house and the realtor is trying to make us buy a new car as well. Fox backed out or blacked out of it, two of its news channels, Fox News and Fox Business, using them as leverage to triple their rates on sports and entertainment channels that are not in this contract. And I was actually watching the video from the, I guess, like one of the chief executives of Dish Network where he kind of goes into more detail on exactly what's going on here and essentially they're renegotiating an agreement so there's agreements that dish network has with all of their content providers and i guess uh dish is paying fox a certain amount right. per year yeah and fox wants more money and fox wants twice as much money apparently for the fox news channel and the dish network guy acknowledged that you know he basically said well you know we could see the point that Fox is worth more because they're like the number one channel. And so, you know, OK, fine, we'll, we'll pay more for Fox and that they were getting ready to come to an agreement when Fox then came to the table and said, oh, yeah, and you need to pay three times as much for this other Fox channel that is nowhere near as popular as Fox, you know, like, I don't know what it would be, FX or something else, some other kind of maybe Fox Sports, right. some other Fox channel that's nowhere near uh, the popularity of Dish or of the uh, Fox News. And so they're basically using Fox News as their leverage point to try to get more money out of Dish for the other channels. And Dish said, whoa. You know, we're right. not going to do this. And so what happened, the claim from Dish, is that they reached the expiration date on the agreement. And before the agreement, agreement expired, they said, hey, look, you know, we haven't finished negotiations. We're willing to extend the agreement. The existing agreement will extend it, you know, another month or two right. or however long. That way the programming can continue on while we negotiate this new agreement. And Fox refused to take that extension. 
And so it was Fox who decided that they weren't going to continue sending their signal to Dish. It wasn't Dish that pulled Fox. It was just that Dish wasn't going to be beaten beaten up, essentially, uh, by Fox. And as Dish pointed out, you know, every increased cost has to be passed on to their customers. Right. As you're talking about this, I think they act, we had a similar problem. And when I was in Long Island, uh, we have cable vision down there. And, mm-hmm. and I remember there was like, it, it was like the day before Fox News was going to get pulled from cable vision. And all the Tea Partiers were like, you've got to call cable vision. You've got to call cable vision. And I was like, I'll call cable vision. I don't want to uh. lose Fox News. <laughs> and uh, this was a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, a few years, <laughs> you know. And, uh, I mean, even even when I started getting into, like, Liberty Ideas, I mean, I was still watching Fox News, you know, because mm-hmm. I certainly wasn't going to watch MSNBC, you know. Right. As long as I was watching television news, I was watching Fox, no question about it. Um, and so, but they, it was a similar situation that they were sort of trying to bully things because they know they're the number one cable news network. Mm-hmm. And there is not another, like, you know, uh, conservative, quote, uh, uh news outlet on the television set so fox news has a lot of leverage there that they could be like you're going to do what we want you to do or we're going to pull fox news away and you're going to lose every conservative subscriber that you have which is a lot of people i mean you will that would to to pull fox news off of uh dish network would absolutely cause millions of people to cancel their dish network subscriptions it would cost them tons and tons and tons of money Well, I guess Dish Network is willing to risk that here. I mean, well, I guess not necessarily. I shouldn't say it's Dish Network risking it because Fox is the one that pulled their their signal. Dish is risking it in that they didn't say yes to the demands that Fox was making. Right. But at the same time, I don't care for that kind of business. Like, you know, certainly Fox is well within their rights to to do business that way. But they're using their viewers as kind of pawns almost in this game to where to try to extract as much money out of Dish as possible, which ultimately means extracting money directly from their viewers because Dish has to just pass on whatever the increased costs are. Uh, to their customers in the form of rate increases. Well, of course, so, and it's not as if Fox News has given their 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 audience like a good economics lesson either, right? So, right. Like, so the the Fox News viewer is all like, "We want Fox, we want Fox. Uh, you have to get Fox back." And then their rates, you know, go up, and then they're like, "Hey, I don't want to pay for this. Go cancel MSNBC." Yeah. So it's, I mean, I I have to say that I'm, first of all, I'm no fan of uh, any of these news channels. Right. Period. I mean, I get my news from the internet. I stop with I stop with the cable TV news. Oh, and they're falling off the radar as far as like the amount of people who actually watch these channels. All of them. Like Fox may be number one, but it's number one in a shrinking category of of people who are just kind of bailing on uh, cable news. Like for me, if I could get Free Talk Live on Dish, or if I could get you know LRN.FM up on Dish Network, I would be very grateful, and I would never consider charging them a dime because I want people to see or hear whatever it is I'm putting out, right? Like why wouldn't why wouldn't Fox just leave them alone? You know, keep the millions because of people can, watching, right? They get it's millions of dollars. It seems like they're cutting their nose off despite their face. I don't know. We're out of time for tonight. But you can join Chris Cantwell on his website anytime at ChristopherCantwell.com. And he'll be back tomorrow night for the Wednesday edition. We'll be online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Do you tr- A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. You think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, 
website or idea, email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Peace News Now is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Tuesday, January 6, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,203. Silver is $16.15, and Bitcoin is trading around $276.79. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Extreme weather, from droughts lasting for weeks, and torrential rainstorms robbing the country of vital crops for food, to snowstorms of 70 inches plus, stopping cities dead in their tracks. Supporting your family through these difficult times is what eFoods Direct does. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Bean or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, a juror from the Ferguson Grand Jury that chose not to indict Officer Darren Wilson is suing the St. Louis County Prosecutor. Grand Juror Doe is being represented by the Missouri chapter of the ACLU. The lawsuit claims that laws designed to keep members of grand juries from speaking about the proceedings of the grand jury are actually violating Grand Juror Doe's First Amendment rights. The ACLU says three specific Missouri statutes that jurors were ordered to follow actually amount to a lifetime gag order. On Monday, New York Times journalist James Risen testified in a pretrial hearing in the controversial case against former CIA officer Jeffrey Sterling. Risen has refused to work with federal authorities who suspect that Sterling was Risen's source for a series of articles and a book. The hearing was held to see how much, if any information, Risen would be willing to reveal. Risen repeatedly refused to provide any new details to the judge and prosecuting attorney. On New Year's Day, a new organization known as the Solutions Institute was launched by Daniel Johnson, founder of People Against the NDAA on the premise of providing professional support and advice for activists. Johnson has established a board of advisors made up of public speakers, journalists, police officers, radio show hosts, social media gurus, and successful activists from all ends of the political spectrum. Activists and organizations can contact SI for help organizing media campaigns, protests, rallies, speaking events, and direct action campaigns. The Liberty Beat is sponsored in part by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, go to libertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Tuesday, January 6, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Jury nullification. That's the focus of today's Liberty Beat special report. Here's John Bush. In the final days of 2014, the Kansas Supreme Court issued a ruling upholding a juror's right to exercise jury nullification. Key among the findings of the case, State v. Smith Parker, is the court's decision that the jury instruction in the case contained a misstatement of the law with respect to reasonable doubt and when a jury should convict a defendant. The judge in the lower court instructed the jury that absent reasonable doubt, you will enter.